All right, here we go. Another one. We're back in LA. Yeah. Looking extra icy today, by the way. <laughs> I got on the list up. <laughs> More than a little. <laughs> you want to like what, a million dollars of the jewelry right now? Something like that? Give or take? Okay, yeah. Yeah. There we go. So you're wearing the King's jersey right now? I'm surprised you're not wearing the Dwight, Dwight Howard jersey. <laughs> Do you have a Dwight Howard jersey in the, in the, you know, the jersey room? Nah. You don't? Right. Okay. We just put you up to speed on what's happening with Dwight. Right, right, right. So apparently there is a gay man who's suing Dwight Howard right now. Dwight Howard hit him up to go hook up with him. And when they went back to the house a trans woman popped out to have a threesome with th this dude claiming that he wasn't down for it. And uh, he was traumatized <laughs> by the whole situation. And now he's suing Dwight Howard. My man, Coach PR, did an interview with him also a few months ago. He just put out the clip that was unreleased where he asked Dwight if he was gay. And Dwight didn't want to answer the question. It's a lot. A lot. Why do you think Dwight is uh is ducking it like this? Because you know, I mean, this is kind of a cool time to be gay right now. <laughs> you get embraced. <laughs> Look at Lil Nas X. Yeah. Think about it. If Lil Nas X didn't come out as gay, I don't think he'd be anywhere near where he is right now. I agree. Yeah. I mean, it ain't like he'll be. He probably will make more money than what he's making. I think so. I mean. Way more money. He's tall. He'll be like the statue. <laughs> <laughs> I the, mean. The gay icon. <laughs> like, I mean, especially for somebody who was that physical at one time. I mean. Oh, you're not taking away any athleticism. Right. Dwight so, Howard. He's, mean, he's a beast on that court. I mean, he's probably a Hall of Famer, right? I think he should be. Yeah. It's a Hall of Famer. I mean, one time he was like unstoppable at one moment. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. But I would tell him, uh, confess to the press. Confess to the press. Confess to the press, man. Stop playing, man. <laughs> Real shit, man. You like yeah. dick, you like dick, you like dick. Yeah. Confess to the press, man. I mean, it ain't, this ain't 1990. This ain't, Yeah. you know, you ain't nobody, you're not going to be banned from certain shit I mean no you'd get in trouble for trying to ban him for certain shit right exactly you know, you'd sir. get cancelled for trying to ban Dwight <laughs> Howard <laughs> you yeah. gotta embrace Dwight Howard in 2023 yeah, I think, I think he, he, don't, he don't face the backlash that's what I think well but I mean he's already... you know the last couple of years he's been talking shit to all the players yeah he's been talking a lot of shit right you know now the table's gonna turn <laughs> <laughs> now the table's gonna turn and I mean those guys you talk shit about they gonna have something to say, bro. I mean, thirty teams passed on him. I don't know if it has anything to do with this or not, but uh, you know, listen, the fact that he's not answering the question means that he's answering the question. You ask me if I'm gay, and I'll just tell you no, flat out. Yeah. No. Well, I heard. Well, you heard wrong. I'm I'm straight. <laughs> I like right. women. Right. <laughs> the end. <laughs> Bring in someone that claims that they did something. I'll address it. You know, but the way he's he's talking about, uh, you know, it's none of, none, no one's business where I put my wood at. And <laughs> he's basically saying, yeah, that's that's what saying? I do. But can y'all stay out of my business? No, this 2023. <laughs> 2023. Ain't nobody staying out your uh -huh. business, man. Just how I mean, confess to the press. man. Yeah, I mean, um, Mace went in on him. Did you hear that? Nah, nah. Oh, Mace. Well, you know, my Instagram been going for a couple Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, they yeah, took both down. of them, man. I got a movie coming out. So. Uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, Mace is basically saying, you know, people got to stop saying that what you do in your own personal time doesn't matter. It, it matters. Yes. You know? I mean, when you're a public figure. Yes. It matters. It matters. Especially when something big like this. Yeah. With the whole trans thing thrown in and everything and yeah. everything else like yeah. that. He also said it's never consensual if you just surprise somebody. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> if someone just pop out, it's Some, not consensual. It's not anymore. consensual. <laughs> you can pop out the class. Pop out. 
Hell no, nah, it ain't consensual. <laughs> With a big, oh man, because cause, cause the, the dude that's suing him, because he's getting sued right now. Okay. Right, and um, I guess the person that popped out, her name was Kitty. Kitty. <laughs> Kitty. <laughs> so so there was a post. I guess this dude had signed an NDA, but he basically said, whatever, I'm going to put it out there. So so the dude, named Stephen Harper, that's the one that's suing Dwight. He said, first and last time I'll ever address this. I would never expose a man or intentionally ruin someone's career, which is why I haven't publicly spoke about this until now. With all due respect, Kitty is an older, unattractive person in their 40s. Hours into me being at Dwight Howard's home, he ambushed me with this person. Dwight never showed me pictures of Kitty nor disclosed their gender. Kitty walked in with a full beard, two-inch heels, and a 28-piece church wig. Immediately, I was thrown off, uncomfortable, and expressed that I wanted to leave. Shortly after, Dwight forced himself onto me, then demanded that Kitty drop me off instead of me calling an Uber to his home. This situation was truly traumatic and has affected me in many ways. Out of fear and intimidation, I did not speak. However, I will not sit back and allow lies to be told about me. I was not Dwight's first victim, but hopefully I'm his last. <laughs> Shout out to Kitty <laughs> with, the, with the wig and the beard. Yeah, uh, I don't know, man. This is uh, this is not what I was expecting in 2023, but here we are. Man, bro, that's crazy, man. That's crazy. I kind of, I didn't figure that, but I used to see someone who used to date the White House, a girl. Yeah, and uh, you gotta make that distinction right now. <laughs> yeah, a girl, a girl, a girl, nice little short, fine motherfucker. And uh, she she was like, uh, I was, one day I was like, you you ever fuck with somebody in, who famous? She was like, yeah, I used to talk to Dwight Howard. You know what I'm saying? But even he made us made us sign an MDA. NDA. Whatever that is, you know, non disclosure that- agreement. Okay. That means that you're not allowed to talk about anything to do with that person and the, or else they could sue you based on the contract that you signed. Okay. Yeah. My boy was explaining that to me when I had told him about it. And I'd be like feeling like the only pe- pe- people do that shit is you trying to hide something. Like, Well, I mean, but famous men do that with women they're dating also. You know I mean? Like, I think dating Kim Kardashian got to sign an NDA and shit like that. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. I feel like they be hiding shit when they do that, bro. Like. How the fuck? You, what, what can she tell? But y'all was fucking, and yeah, but people turn careers into fucking someone. Oh, famous. okay, right. You know what I'm right, saying? People right. write books, do right, interviews, right, right. do documentaries, do movies. You know, go on media runs, like do club walkthroughs. Like, yeah, that's that, that's too much, man. I, I don't know, man. Yeah, it's it's wild. But when I when I found that, I was like, man, he must be hiding something. When I first heard about it, the first first couple of times. Well, you know, he has a baby with Royce Reed. That's that girl from Basketball Wives. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. yeah. Little brown skin, pretty, yeah. pretty girl. And I guess he put her through hell. So she's like having a field day right now. Oh yeah? Yeah, she's on Instagram. Throwing all types fan. of throwing all types of subs and <laughs> you know, a little shade here and there and all that shit. Yeah, man. I, I don't know. But look, I think if he just came out. Got, got him a rainbow suit and just said, look, I'm gay. I like men and women. I'm sure lots of dudes is up in his DMs right now. <laughs> you know, that's cool with Kitty and all that. Yeah, I know. Hey, he, hey. <laughs> I would tell him, you know, because basically you you already confessing, saying yeah. you do what you want to do. Just go and confess to the press. Yeah. Go on Capitol Hill, man. Yeah. Get your big tall ass on Capitol Hill. <laughs> And just confess to the press. Yeah, because it's crazy. I just had Johnny Gill on my show recently. And I actually connected you two. Yeah. Put you guys on FaceTime and everything else like that. And he's always had the gay rumors, which in all honesty, because I, you know, I interviewed him and we kind of hung out a little bit yeah. afterwards. Like, he don't seem gay to me at all. Yeah. But but the shit had been going for so long that he said in the interview that he was dating this woman whose friends kept, oh, you know, I heard he's gay, whatever. He actually took a lie detector test with her to show that he wasn't gay. Because of the gay rumors, you actually did a a polygraph test with her. 
yeah. That's yeah. wild, man. Yeah. yeah. That's wild to have to actually go through that extent she never, to show that you're straight. Like that, that's crazy it was, to me. You know, it was crazy because it, it the, the rumor had been going for so long. People are like parrots. <laughs> they will talk as if they know something and repeat it and as all, and like they've seen it or been there or seen. It's like, and what I wanted her to understand was I said, you know, she never asked me to do it. I said, you know, I'm doing this because I want to show you and prove something to you about people, even your own so-called friends. I said, you know, um, I, I took a part, we, we call, I called this, I looked in the yellow page, so I just <laughs> found a company from my underwear and I had them come over. I said, and I told her, I said, right, you write down all your questions and, I'll, and any question, I'm going to write down questions. Have I ever been with another man? Have I ever thought about another man? I went to, I, we did it all because I just wanted to. And I remember when we got, got the results back and she read them and she saw it was all, it was all bullshit. Yeah. And we laid there in the bed. I'll never forget. And, uh, uh, I was so full at one point that I thought tears was going to come down, but it, I was saying to her and wanted to show her that this is why you have to watch people and be careful about the dogs that bring the bones. That's how serious this shit gets sometimes. That's <laughs> crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. Hey, man, Dwight, just come out the closet, man. Embrace that shit. Yeah, that's what I would tell him, man. Yeah, embrace it. Embrace it. You'll just get bigger. Yeah. You'll make more money. You'll get more sponsorships. Oh, he definitely will get more sponsorships. Yeah. Because, you know, yeah, like Lil Nas X would have been a, a fraction of, of his current celebrity if he just remained in, in the closet man that just dressed regular and wasn't all out there and wearing the crazy outfits. I think that's what made him famous. Right. If he was a regular cowboy. <laughs> he was yeah. a regular cowboy. Yeah. Old Town Road would have been his only hit. He probably would have had those other hits. Well, yeah. I don't know. Shout out to Dwight Howard, man. C come on, Vlad TV. We'll talk all about it. Yeah. You know? Bring him on, Vlad. Bring him on. Well, the next big thing in the news. Keefe D. Since our last interview, he's been arrested. Did you watch the interview of his arrest? I mean, watch the video of him getting arrested, like the body yeah, cam footage? Yeah, yeah. See, he wasn't even surprised. He was, he was, he was, it was like he was ready. Like he was ready. Yeah. He had his little, you know, tea in the morning, a little water bottle, having a walk. Put him in the back of the car. He said, Oh, yeah, I just got arrested for the biggest story ever Las Vegas history. And he's still locked up. He's not given bail. There was actually a rumor that he got beat up and stabbed in jail, but I heard it wasn't true. Yeah. Were you surprised that he got arrested? Uh, kind of, because uh, he been talking about it, man. And uh, I thought when he got busted or whatever, he had immunity. So when he got arrested, I was like, immunity must be fucking gone. I mean, he must, I don't, I don't know. I was kind of surprised. I thought he'd never get arrested for it. Well, here's the kind of immunity he got, and this is where people get it um, a little mixed up. He got something called a proffer agreement. Are you familiar with what that is? Yeah. Okay, so here's how proffer agreements work. He got busted for a PCP ring. He had enough PCP on him to give him life in prison. You know, PCP is, you know, a real serious drug that they yeah. don't play around with. So when... Detective Kading, who was also, you know, the detective for the, the Tupac case, when they caught up with him, they, they met up with him in his lawyer's office and was recording him secretly and basically told him this. Confess to the whole Tupac involvement and we'll drop the PCP case yeah. and you'll walk away from life in prison. And they gave him something called the proffer agreement which another word for it is queen for a day. Meaning that whatever he says that day in regards to this Tupac case can't be used against him in a court of law. 
that he could talk about. He could he's, he could say, I'm the trigger man. I killed him. I, you know, I got the gun. I got rid of the gun, blah, 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 blah. Whatever he wants to say cannot be used against him that day. So if he turns around and tells the same story tomorrow, that can be used against him. So if he writes a book, it can be used against him. If he does an interview, it can be used against him. If he tells the story to a different law enforcement person, it can be used against him. Which I'm sure he knew, but I guess he felt that, I don't know, the immunity would just be blanket and just be applied to everything. So immunity, not every piece of immunity is the same way. So that's basically what's going on with him. So his book, my interview, all his other interviews, all of that could be used against him in his case. You never heard of proffer agreement before? No, no, no. I thought immunity, heard. like, if, I thought it just, if you get immunity, it's, it's done. Yeah, but usually that involves, like, standard immunity usually involves you testifying and going to court and everything else like that. Like, Sammy the Bull got immunity. Yeah. You know, but he had to go and just go court case after court case after court case, take the stand here, take the stand there, yeah. take the stand here, write a statement here, do this, do that. You know, basically, you're working for the, the police or the feds right. until they're done with you. But a proffer agreement, they're just trying to get information, which they then can use to put together the case. See what I'm saying? So he got the proffer agreement, but he kept talking. Right. So this is this is where he is right now. So we're we're gonna see what happens because, I mean, he's sixty one years old. So anything he gets in regards to that is probably gonna be a life sentence for him. Yeah. yeah. I mean, how do you feel as a Tupac fan that this case might finally be solved? I don't feel no way. You know, I'm a businessman, but I'm a I'm a real street nigga at heart. You know, I don't wish penitentiary on nobody. Yeah, I mean, because Las Vegas PD have been calling me ever since to try to get me to cooperate. They want all my, all my raw footage. I've just been ignoring the phone calls. Yeah, I got the voicemails and everything. Just because for me, I don't, I don't care if he gets convicted or not. That's not, that's not what I'm, what I did the interview for. My interview was to to get the right, to get the real story out there. You know, I mean, this is like my favorite rapper. So to me, I felt like I saw the case four years ago. Right. But I don't, my thing was like, if you sit down with me and do an interview, I'm not going to then go and testify against you. Right. Regardless of whether I agree with you or not. Right. You know what I mean? And that, that's how I am. Now, will my interview be used in the that's case? That's how I am as a fan. Yeah. <laughs> that's how I am as a, you know, I'm a two by head, but yeah. you know. You're not going to testify. I'm not gonna, you know, I, I just feel like, you know, I'm cut from a different cloth, bro, you know. I'm cut from a different cloth. I mean, uh, and I also, you know, feel like the karma came back already, you know. That whatever you do, bro, this shit coming back, bro. I learned that in life, man. Yeah. Whatever you do, it's gonna come back even equal or even more. And, uh, Tupac and Orlando, they they died the same way, you know. Yeah. I feel like the karma gonna come back anyway. But you know, I'm, as as a person who I am and how I was raised, uh, we don't wish penitentiary on nobody. Yeah, I mean, to me, this almost reminds me of the Alpo situation. You got someone who did a lot of dirt, but ultimately got their life back, right? Alpo killed a bunch of people, snitched on a bunch of people, sold a bunch of drugs, slapped a bunch of people around. Yeah. He did his time. He got witness protection. They put him in Maine somewhere. Yeah. He had a white best friend. <laughs> you know, yeah. they had matching trucks. <laughs> Came home talking about it freely. But then he went back to Harlem. Yeah. And left witness protection, start hanging out, start talking shit. This was like, the dude that killed him, I think was a road rage situation. 
he like smacked some dude like that was on a motorcycle or some weird like that and the dude saw him and just you know knew who he was and went and got a gun and shot him yeah he could have lived out his life in maine quietly died of old age keefe he had his proffer agreement if he never mentioned it again he couldn't have been charged with nothing but i think he wanted that uh that fame yeah because he went and wrote a damn book because people are like oh that's the reason why but it's like when i interviewed him i based my interview on his book his co-author was sitting right here okay so my thing is like listen like i'm not trying to put anyone in prison but if you write a book about the shit i don't have a problem interviewing you about the book that you wrote yeah like i say you know i don't wish that on nobody but like i say whatever you do is coming back you know it's probably karma catching up with him. You know? I, I think with him, too, I think that the snitch allegations, well, the snitch, you know, people calling him a snitch bothered him. And he wanted to, like, tell his side of the story. Oh, okay. Because he was a Southside Crip. He was, you know what I mean? Right, he was right, a thorough right. dude. He was a yeah. D-boy. Like, you know, I'm sure that shit bothered him. Yeah, that Her, probably was eating him up, bro. That probably yeah. was eating him up because I didn't see, seen even... even Crips come on on interviews talking like, uh, I want to fuck with Keefe D. Like what he did was, you know, like he shouldn't have did that to the. So I, I feel like, I agree, bro. I feel like that was a reason for him to talk talk about a lot of stuff because it was eating him up inside, bro. You know, like OGs like that. They take their time and lay down. You know they. Yeah. Especially them OGs that age, you know, they 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 known to take their time and lay down and set examples for my generation coming up to do the same thing. And I feel like when he did that with that with that Tupac stuff, I feel like he 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 kind of lost that. Yeah, I mean, I heard that Orlando's mom was really upset when he yeah. when he uh, admitted to all the shit like in the beginning. Even when he said upset. something about me when I would come to Cali, there Crips would come like boost. We don't respect that shit. Like, <laughs> like I'm telling you, it was like, Boost, don't worry about dude, dog. We don't respect nothing he did, bro. He said that nigga, like, on cuz, we don't respect that shit. Like, so I feel like that probably would have been, been a reason for him to, you know, try to clear his name and, and do interviews like that. But I mean, <laughs> Everyone wants to take that that Tupac. I'm the next Tupac. I'm the I'm the next this. I'm the next that. But Pac just had this uh, this star power about yeah. him. Yeah. That that transcended music. That transcended movies. That transcended you know whatever. You know, like I, I remember uh, talking to, to Michael Jai White, who had hung around him a couple of times, and he said, "Yeah, if Pac had lived, and he's an actor himself." He said he'd be winning Oscars. And uh, so you think that had he stayed with it, he'd be winning Oscars and the such? I, 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 yeah, he he would okay. he would he would have. This been, is coming from a professional actor, not from yeah. me, from a professional lifelong actor like yourself. Because yeah, he, his natural ability was, I mean, that that's that's God given. He, huh. he, he was natural. Yeah. He was that good. Michael actor. Jai White is the, is the big guy. Yeah, right? the big yeah. dude. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And it's like, he was just. Uh, Every movie he killed. Yeah. Like, bro, he can play anything. Like, he, Pac was different, bro. Like, Pac, Pac was different, bro. He was only And 25. he had all the bitches. He yeah. had yeah. all the well, bitches. He had Madonna. He had all the bitches that I wanted when I was a kid. <laughs> Perez, I used to love Perez. Wait, Rosie Perez? Rosie Perez. He fucked with Rosie Perez? Yeah, he took her to the awards. Oh yeah, he probably fucked her there. He probably, of course. <laughs> Get your back to my rich. They said I was reading that in the magazine just now. They was like, he took Rosa Perez to the awards this night, but. I don't think they were dating. They were just friends. Right. Well, he, I actually looked it up. Uh, she said we weren't dating and everyone thought we were. While they looked like a couple, even holding hands on the red carpet, she said that they were actually, uh, that Pac was actually a last minute replacement for that award show. Oh, okay. That's what she said. That's but, what you she know, said. 
shit. But after watching what uh, do the right thing, no, <laughs> the white man can't jump. <laughs> Thank God for left nipple. Thank God for right nipple. Remember that scene? <laughs> shit. If I was Pac. Man, I know Pac smashed that. <laughs> Fuck that. Rose Just like Jay the Pinky. Huh, Pac ain't really. Yeah. If I do a first interview of anybody, I want to interview Jay the Pinky. Yeah. I want to ask her some Pac, some Pac questions. Well, let's talk about Jada Pinkett because she is on a. And I, I want to ask her some podcast. crazy promo tour right now. I'm, I'm actually mad that we couldn't get a Jada Pinkett interview. I, I'm mad about that. Jada Pinkett, I, I, I said I'd never do a podcast, but I'll do one interview with her. With her, and I'm gonna pay you. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, what do you think about what she's doing right now? I mean, she's putting out so much shit right now that it's crazy. He said that she said that uh, Tupac proposed to her in jail. She said that Tupac had uh, alopecia, which makes no damn sense because he'd have no eyebrows. I see. I don't know about that. <laughs> I just know when I was reading the IG for my IG got to. She was going in, bro. Like, yeah, man. Someone said, I'm tired of Jada Pinkett, Shakur, Alcina Smith. <laughs> Did you see the pictures with the album covers with Tupac album covers with, oh, her, with face? her face on it? Yeah. Hold on, let me, let me. The internet is undefeated, bro. I had tears in my eyes. They were sitting there to my DM, bro. Yeah, she. Bro, they had bro. They had the Me Against the World album with her standing up with, with a bald head. That shit was so funny, bro. I can't find it. And I used to love Jada Pinkett. I ain't lying. I, I, I'm, I'm still attracted to her. It just, bro, I mean, that little mother, she always been sexy to me. Yeah, I mean, listen, they obviously knew each other and they, they had some sort of connection. Um, they were in what, the School of Performing Arts in Baltimore together. I think he bust her chair. Oh, you think she was a virgin? I think he bust her chair. Man. That's, that, that's that cherry love. Go look at their pictures when she take pictures. She holds her hands like this across his chest. Here we go. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. I mean, they kind of like, feel snugly together, bro. Like, bro, like, I know she married right, right now, or whatever. But Is she though? Because her and she say her and Will have been separated. Well, they, for like they're seven not years. divorced, so you married. I, I have no idea, man. But I, I think, I think he bust her chair, man. But I think, I think he, but I think it was real love. If he, I mean, who's gonna propose to somebody they never fucked? Yeah. Well, but then again. If you're in prison. You wasn't in prison since 1980s when you met her. No, but she said that he proposed to her when she went to go see him in prison. Yeah, 94. 94, yeah. Yeah. And they've been since 86, 87. The same school. Okay, so you think that Pac took Jada Pinkett's virginity? I think he bust her chair. That, that's a very plausible explanation. Hey, bro, I, I, go on, I go on reality. Yeah, I don't go on what people answer. See, the questions be complicated, but the answers be simple. I always <laughs> say that. I always say that. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, and most times you'll go back and ask for marriage from who? Your first love. You know, yeah. I, I, you know, like I just, I just can't believe the bond that they had. All those times together at that school, you know, that's when you're the freakiest. Now, well, those yeah. younger days, that's when you're the freakiest. No, you're right. When you get that chance, that tongue going in that mouth. <laughs> Your dick get hard just from just from kissing on the neck. You know what I'm saying? So, you know. Then you say you were selling crack? I know you gave up the pussy. <laughs> if you selling crack, you gave up the pussy. I don't mean no harm. You come up in that, that jungle like that, then I can believe she from Baltimore. I can believe she sold crack. Yeah. I can believe it all day. Yeah. But if you selling crap, making moves at that age, I didn't, I didn't had, I didn't had the Jada Pinkets, mm. the hustlers who come from that background, who mother is doing that, they launch onto a man. Yeah. They launch onto a man for support, for love, for everything. That pussy <laughs> come out them drawers a little easier. <laughs> 
when you selling crack, supporting shit, having to be your own woman, yeah. your legs are open up like your own woman. Well, because you need a man to kind of back you up. Yes. Right. Questions are complicated. <laughs> Answers are simple. If you were slinging crack, Rock. Yeah. You gave him that pussy. This nigga charming. This nigga. <laughs> everyone would say Pac was charming. He Now he asking to marry you? And y'all have never tongue kissed? Mm. <laughs> Fuck out of here. Come on. <laughs> you talking to Boosie. Come on. Well, uh, Jada said that at one point when there was rumors going around that her and Will had been divorced, she said that Chris Rock called her and asked her out. And she said, no, I'm still married. And he goes, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. But they're so saying, was the Chris Rock joke a sucker punch? Well, I guess what, the, what she's implying was that, and she probably told that to Will, so, and Will already had that bottled yeah, up, yeah. like animosity. You, oh, you yeah. trying? You trying to holler now at my you trying, wife? Now you trying to double cross me? After you tried to holler at my wife, I'm finna slap the fuck out you. Yeah, that makes sense. Makes more sense, doesn't that it? That makes more sense. Right? Cause she she even said that. Um, Cause you know, remember she kind of laughed afterwards. She said that. Uh, number one, she said that. Will Smith hadn't called her his wife in a very long time. So she was kind of surprised that because she said they were separated. But she also said that she thought it was a skit. She didn't think it was real. That's why she laughed. Oh, okay. But to me, that sounded kind of like a... Yeah, that sounds kind that of sound like yeah. So But that's good me. acting on Will. I could believe Will probably ain't called her his wife. But after he did that, he had to do that. That's an actor move. Yeah. That's a fucking actor move. Yeah. I've been wanting to slap the shit out of him. But now let me come back and give this actor role to make me make me look better. Mm -hmm. You don't do that to a man's wife. A lot of people would say that. But he probably been wanting to slap the shit out of him since he so-called tried to holler at his wife when they was on. I don't Bad really turn. know what's going on at all because, you know, she tried to say that she wasn't technically married. She was separated from Will when she got with August Alsina. To kind of try to, you know, I mean, I feel like she's sort of trying to rewrite history to make her look like the innocent person here. That she didn't do nothing wrong. She was just, you know, faithful to everybody and, you know, respects everyone and all this stuff has happened around her. Right, but, she probably trying to clean it up a little bit, but you did wrong if you're married and, and you do that regardless. Yeah. You know, but. Well, I mean, get an official divorce if that's the case. Right. Get a divorce right. and then go, right. go, you know, fuck your son's homie if that's what you want to do. Right, right. So I'm still a Jada Pinkett fan. She's she's sexy as fuck. A pretty woman, man. She is. She she's been, always she, been. She's been always bad. Been. She's yeah. been bad. Remember a Men of Society? You know. That was the first time I saw her. When she kissed that nigga chest. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I thought that was my, I wanted that to be my chest so bad. <laughs> Man, that woman, <laughs> hey, that was like, she was ghetto royalty. Mm. Like, after, bro, like, man, bro. That, 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 uh, that means to society movie. Uh. Man, Pac was supposed to be in on that. See, they was on, oh, bro. Pac, Pac was supposed to play. Uh, I just Sharif. read about that. He missed $300,000 on that, uh, bro. Well, yeah, I interviewed both the Hughes brothers. But, you know, they, they told me that, like, in retrospect, it probably worked out well because Pac was too big to play a minor role in a yeah. movie. You know what I'm to saying? To play Sharif, like yeah. for real, who, who was really like a, a you know a very minor part yeah. in man's society. Yeah, it's like I'm gonna stay with him. You know what yeah. I mean? Why y'all drinking in forties? Yeah, <laughs> you know? why y'all like, drinking this poison, this man? Poison. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because because I guess what had happened was during during rehearsals, he was like. Yo, so wh why did my character turn Muslim? Like, what's his backstory? Like, what, like, what, what made him? You know, what type of shit was he doing before? We gotta, you know, we gotta change the script around. And, and they were like, Yo, Pac, it don't, it don't work this way. This, the script is done. Like, you can't just come in here during a reading and start changing the movie around. You yeah. know, this is a big production. Yeah. You know, Disney was behind it and shit. You know what yeah. I'm saying or whatever else. Like, no wait, New Line. Sorry, New Line Cinema was behind it. It was a big, okay. it was a big production. 
So they got into a big argument over that shit. Paco like, man, fuck this movie. Yeah. They walked out. And it all kind of worked out. Yeah. Easy E was supposed to play O Dog. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. Damn. He couldn't have been in like O Dog. Yeah. O Dog uh, was the sickest one of the one of the best characters ever, bro. Yeah, and dude killed like, it. Like, bro, he killed it. everybody on that killed it. Like that yeah. was that was like the perfect film. Yeah, it was. It's in I, my theater right now, like. Right. On the wall, bro. I thought it was, as a movie, way better than Boys in the Hood. Yeah. Ten yeah. times. As a movie. Ten I, I times. understand Boys in the Hood was an And I used to movie. argue about this with people all right. in jail. Yeah. Like, Menace to Society toppled Boys in the Hood. Yeah. Just a better film. The first ten minutes. Yeah. What'd you say about my mama? The first 10 minutes. I don't minutes. want no trouble. I don't want no trouble. <laughs> <laughs> bro, like, hey, hey, classic, bro. Like, that's one of, that's my favorite, that's one of my favorite gangster movies, bro. Yeah. But New you know, Jack City, Menace to Society first. Okay. I would say New Jack City second. Yeah, that was a great one. South Central third. See, I want to put South Central in my top three. South Central because it, it touched it, I, every time I watch it I cry because mm. the relationship with me and my fault okay yeah so it hits close to home for so you. it hits yeah. close to I get home it. for I get me it. yeah you know so uh, but Boys in the Hood top five yeah well Men's Society you mean Men, yeah Men's, no Men's Society one what Boys in the Hood top five Boys in the Hood top five see but you know what's interesting though when I talked to the Hughes brothers you know what movie they said is way better than Men's Society what American Me I forgot about American Me Top 5 easy. They said that they had basically had the script and they're starting to work on the film and they saw American Me and they went back to the drawing board and said, oh, never mind. Like, we got to, you know, yeah, this Eric, is what we're competing against. We got to. American Me is my is my number one jail movie. Yeah. That was the movie that made me never want to go to prison. Yeah. That right there. That was my I, number one. I always say that. And I didn't put. So many of my partners, my younger partners on American Me who never saw it. Yeah. And they'd be like, damn. You know, like 10 people got killed over that movie? Oh, yeah? Oh, you didn't know this part? Yeah. I interviewed uh, Danny Trejo. You know who that is? He played M Machete. You know who that is? Oh, let me show you. You know who this is. This is Danny Trejo. Yeah. He being all of me. Being right. All of he was actually affiliated with the Mexican Mafia. And knew a bunch of those dudes, like okay. the, the real dude, the real Mexican mafia leaders, and okay. they are part of this. And what had happened was in that movie, Edward James almost was kind of you know he had like Mexican mafia dudes as consultants and like background actors, and you know he was like you know researching the whole story through them. And he decided to show that rape scene where the the leader of the Mexican mafia got raped in, in juvenile. Remember? Yeah, yeah. And all hell broke loose because that dude was still alive who they're showing getting raped and that never happened. So motherfuckers lost their fucking mind. There was a hit on Edward James almost and 10 people that were affiliated with that movie got killed. That's how serious that movie got. So that movie to me, if you want to talk about some gangster shit. It, 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 it will top everything because actual gangster murders were happening around that film Damn. because of what was said, what was done in that movie. Yeah, true story. True story. We'll, 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 I'll even show the clip from, from Danny Trejo talking about that. True story. They were so mad about that, of him putting that in. Yeah. Because it just wasn't true. And if it was true, then the leader of the Mexican mafia would be seen differently yeah. because his manhood was taken. Yeah. So, so motherfuckers just flipped out. And we're like, oh no, this motherfucker gotta die. And for years, he had he had money on his head, he had to carry a gun, armed security, leaving the house, like everything. And other people were getting killed around that shit. American me. So when you watch it next time, just understand that there's it's not just a movie. And that did that didn't happen either. Yeah. And that was a for Yeah, and I thought it was foul for him to do that. That's foul. Yeah. To just go and take an actual person and show them being a, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's foul. Being raped by another man, like. That's foul. Yeah. Just to make a little bit of a, of a, of a cooler scene or yeah. have a plot twist or whatever the fuck else. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, American Me. If y'all haven't seen it, but I, I remember watching it as a kid. I was in high school and I was watching the rape scenes and I said, oh, this is what happens in prison? I'm good. Never mind. That was a hard I, 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 movie. Boy. I, don't, I, don't, I don't want none of this shit. That was a good one now, boy. Yeah. That was a good so you would put that over Menace? Boys in the Hood? I look at it like a jail movie. I don't look at it like a it's street a movie. movie. It's like it's like most of it is is incarcerated, you know, like yeah, exactly. it shows prison. Men's society don't show prison. Yeah. It shows street life. You know. Yeah, I mean I interviewed this one dude recently, um, named uh uh John Boxer Mendoza. Yeah. He was uh, a high ranking member of the Nuestra Familia. Okay. Which is the um uh, Norteños, right? So you got the Serenios, the Mexican Mafia, and the Norteños, the Nuestra Familia. Yeah. So he was a shot caller for the Nuestra Familia. And I talked to him about, like, you know, the scene from American Me. Remember when Puppet had to kill his own brother? Yeah. And he said, Yeah, that type of shit happens. And he told me about a situation where one of the Nuestra Familia members, their mother, was snitching. Yeah. And they told him that they're going to have to kill his mother. And he was like, I understand. Yeah. That's the type of shit that goes in. That type of life, man. That shit is, is crazy. Yeah, that American me, like, you know, before I before I had caught my case, bro, I was I was finna shoot a movie to try to top boys in the hood. Okay. But after after that I said I'ma wait. Yeah. Yeah, I was finna do a uh, do one about uh just straight in the hood and I was gonna put like uh 17 murder scenes in there. Okay. Uh, and you're going gonna to have film some of it like in a jail? Nah, on the streets. On the streets, okay. Yeah, it come on when he when he, when he, when he, when he, when he go see his uh, little boy born as soon as he leave the hospital, all of them get killed. Right. Like, I was, finna, I was finna try to top it, like, you know, because nobody not doing that no more. Like, yeah. you know, you don't see no movie where every other scene is a murder scene. So I was gonna do something crazy, but I decided not to. I'm gonna do it later. Yeah, after your case is uh, yeah. settled, and everything else like that. And uh, you know, we're not gonna talk about your case because it's still an open case. Yeah. But you know, um, you know, hopefully it'll work out great for you right. and so forth. And I've I've had a few talks with with your lawyer and everything else like that. You got you got good people on your side, right? Well, I wasn't gonna talk about this, but but. Your brother decided to go and do a, a set of interviews. Yeah. So so here we are. Yeah, he's scrambling Blue, for money. Blue, I know. I, I, Blue, I told you I wouldn't talk about this. But TQ has decided to go on a damn media run <laughs> about this shit. And fucking itself up. So it just is what it is at this point. Yeah. Okay? So TQ, your brother... Do you guys have the same uh, mom and dad? Yeah. Okay. We're and he's the brother. oldest. Yeah. We're not brothers anymore. But I, 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 Just I, say TQ. TQ. He went on Say Cheese. He also went on Academics and told his side of the story. Yeah. And I listened to, to most of it. Um, He basically at one point said that he did sign your name on, on some contracts, right? Yeah. He also tried to say that when the company was formed, you were in prison and a person in prison can't actually form a company and stuff like that. You heard that part? Yeah. These excuses he's trying to, he's just trying to come up with, bro. Like He's just trying, every, he's trying to do everything to fabricate from what he's done, but mm. that's what he do. Like he's trying to do everything to try to fabricate from what he's done, but. You know, if you look at his interviews, they asked him, did Boosie know about this deal? They said they couldn't find me. Mm. He's hard to get in touch with. Five million dollars? <laughs> I'm hard to get in touch with? And after, if, 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 you, if, you, if you see what I posted on my Instagram, I posted tweets that Blue said. Mm -hmm. Eight, nine months after they did that. I'll sign to Boosie and this, that. Boosie is a real person. 
Boosie looked out for me. He gave me this. He gave me that. This out blue mouth. Mm -hmm. This ain't out in TQ. Boosie believed in me when nobody believed in me. He said all these words. I was the great CEO until I dropped my, 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 my suit paper. Now I'm the bad guy. Yeah, he tried to say in the interview that the only thing that you did for Blue was get him a Vlad TV interview and let him wear a chain. Go look what Blue said. What did Blue say? Blue said he, gave, he didn't gave me two chains. Everything that, this, this, this is what Blue needs to understand, and Blue knows this is the truth. Every time TQ came with 10000 10000 to do something to his, for his career, it came from me. He had no money. He was the cable guy. He hangs up wall mounts on TVs. Oh, he worked for a cable company? Yeah, he was the cable guy. Okay. He's the cable guy. Okay. I put the cable guy in a position. He was the cable guy. He fixed wall mounts on TVs. Hmm. How can he give you 10000 How can he promote your career? How can he give you anything? Right, because what he was saying in the interviews was that the issue that he had with you was that when you sign artists, you don't give them an advance. Bullshit. Go ask artists. It's not a $100,000 advance, but go ask artists. It's an advance. It's an advance. And whatever you give, you got, you got to understand this. If you give somebody two, three, thirty thousand dollars to change, if you give somebody money, 10000 add up. If, and, and, and they don't look at it like that. It's just when artists get to a certain point in life, they forget about all that. And they look at other artists and try to compare what they've gotten. You know, because, nigga, this shit adds up. Right, because after you signed him and he started I just bubble, didn't put it on paper. Right. Like Atlantic do. Right. Like C Columbia. He signed to Columbia, right? Yes. Yeah. And they tried to run off with that money. Right, because it was 150000 he said. Yeah, they tried to run off with that money. Who was they? Blue and TQ. Okay. I raised hell at it. I raised hair at, Col at Columbia. Ask anybody at Columbia. That's why Columbia, Columbia ended up dropping us. Right, because he said that, that you, you raised so much hell that Columbia just wanted to get out the situation at one point. Right, right, right. right, right. He, also, he also said that there was a story you said that you, you ran up on Blue to get some money. And he said that just wasn't true, that the money was wired to you. There was no nah, confrontation. Nah, it was true. I can get somebody in here right now. My, my security, he was right there. So you ran up on Blue? On Canal Street. On Canal Street. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't run up on him. I told him, bring me my money. Bring me my fucking money. Mm -hmm. and he brought me my money. He told me, meet him in, 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 in the middle of uh, in New Orleans. And he brought me, brought, yeah, and he brought me my money. The same day... I was looking for a TQ. I, I found them. I was stalked around New Orleans all day. I jumped out on him with a bat, chased them all the way down New Orleans. You chased TQ with a bat? Yeah. <laughs> Foose, you're crazy. These is facts. This is not, this okay. is not, ain't no cap in my rap, bro. All my, all my interviews. Nah, I believe you. I, all my I, interviews. I, I've never caught you in a lie. Let's put it like this. We go back all, 20 years. No, in 20 years, me and you go back, I cannot think of one situation where you told me something and someone else said, no, that's not true. And really, this is what happened. Not one time. He's trying to, he's trying to say blue. I'm not saying that I put a gun to blue head. Yeah. I'm not, it was just an argument, man. Bring me my, okay, bro, I'm finna bring you. And he brought me 30K. Okay. It wasn't a, you know, I don't know why he's trying to stand up and make blue look hard. He's an R&B singer. Yeah. Why are you trying to make him look tough? You know, like, um, on, the, on, the, on a new lawsuit I got, he forged, Blue name. Oh, okay. And I'm going to show you the text from that after this. Okay. With them two texting. Because I told Blue, look, Blue, I'm finna sue you again, bro, uh, for the beat bread, beat bread deal y'all did. They went and got 150000 from beat bread. Blue said, man, I didn't, I didn't do none of that. So Blue sent me the text that he texts TQ. Blue asked him, man, why did you forge my name? Mm. Why did you forge my name? TQ like, man, um, bro, uh, making all kind of excuses. He like, you didn't have to do that, man. 
because uh don't um you and Boosie own half of that. Boosie knows about this. No, Boosie don't know nothing. Right, because TQ was trying to say that he would regularly have to forge your signature for shows and stuff like that. And this it that, doesn't the third. make sense, Vlad. He's trying to take one thing he did and stretch it. Mm. And stretch it. He said he couldn't find me. You ain't got my mama you, number. You ain't. If you couldn't find me, like, like, if you tell me it's $50, you can find me. I've never had problems reaching you. Never. Yeah. If and I we don't have the you, same mom, same yeah, dad. No, we're not related. <laughs> if I FaceTime you, I can usually get a hold of you that day. Bro, and, yeah. and, and, and we're not beefing at this time? Yeah. We're not beefing. TQ is your mom's first child. Yeah. The oldest. Yeah. Her pet. And it always been like this. And you said that she takes his side against you. Every time. This has been since the back of the car. <laughs> <laughs> if he kicked the seat, I, I got slapped. <laughs> you know, and even, even, even my family, my whole family was like, Boosie, why are you acting like this? You knew whose side she would take. Okay. This is not this is not new to you. Like my whole family said, it don't matter what that boy do, you know this. Well, but you you're saying that your mom wants you to drop the lawsuit because she don't want to TQ to go to jail, but this is a civil suit, so he wouldn't go to jail anyways. I don't know. She wants me to drop the she wants me to drop the suit, bro. Like uh But I'm saying a lawsuit has nothing to do with jail time. I filed another lawsuit on him and um and what you call them, not Louisiana also. I mean, unless you actually- And it's going to be mean, a criminal lawsuit. Okay, though. so you're actually filing a criminal lawsuit. For, on everybody. For on everybody for So fraud that means too. that people might go to jail. Yeah. And I don't give a fuck. Fuck him. Fuck him. Fuck I'm, him. I'm, I'm, he, 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 he's not a, uh, he's not a, he's not a, he's not a, he's not a gangster. Okay. What he did to me took five million. I'm not going to shoot him. Yeah. This shit is handled in court. Like, you know what I'm saying? He's a legal citizen. He's a, you know, if he was a, if he was a G, if he took five million for me, it'll be a different story. He said in his interview that me and you are closer than you and him. Me and who? Me and you. That our relationship is closer than. Yeah, I've never, I, I've like. He said like, that he doesn't talk to you. He doesn't I, go to your house. Nah, that type of thing. Nah, nah. Like this shit didn't like. He always, it's, 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 by, it's Ricky and Doughboy. You saw Boys in the Hood, right? Yeah. It's Ricky and, he been the pussy. My daddy used to say, boy, you gonna be gay. You, gonna, you a bitch. You know what I'm saying? Like, he always been favored by my mom. Mm. He went to, she paid to send him to magnet school. Mm. I went to the trenches. Mm. I played outside. He, he stayed in the house on the computer. You see where I'm at? Mm -hmm. A woman's first child is, Special. It's special. Yeah. Even her sisters would tell you, like, Boosie, you know she gonna do that because she feel like you're the you're the hard one. Who, who's your oldest? Is it Ivy? Ivy. So do you feel like you have a certain level of favoritism with Ivy? Oh, I did. I did coming up. Yeah. Coming up, Ivy was everything. Everything. Yeah. And and, and it reflects back with my mother and TQ. Mm-hmm. Like that is her, that is her everything. You know, when I get in trouble, she fighting for him not to get in trouble. <laughs> but when I get in trouble, you know what it is? You made your bed, you lay in it. <laughs> Telling you, Black, you mm. built for this. Mm. You are built for this. Yeah. You know, I got mad with my cousin Trey. My cousin Trey say, you know, she does this, bro, because she know that you the hard one and you built for this and he's not, I don't get, I don't want to hear that shit. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. I got mad because, you know, I, I called him crying like, bro, bro, like, you know, like this been happening to me my whole life and it's, and it's still happening. I couldn't, I couldn't expect this, but you know, it, it, it hurt, man. It hurt when you have that relationship with your mother and you done done so much for your mother and, and your mother done done so much for you, been by your side. But when it comes to this side every time. 
I don't get no love, bro. You know, I get, I get, I get, I get shunned, bro, and it hurt me. Well, I remember. Hey, look, you you introduced me to Blue. I did the interview. Me and Blue had each other's numbers, and at one point. Everybody remember this. Man, I just talked yeah. to Tony Neal. Tony Neal, like, man, you called me. Yeah. Man, I'm man, I'm finna send you a record, man. This, right. this is it. This, bro, like. Yeah. Right. You know, so so you brought me to, you know, you brought and me. And they playing Blue. games, man. Like, you know, like when when I told Blue, I'm like, bro, I'm finna, I'm finna sue you again. And 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 and, and, and post a text showing that he forged your name. Now, now you gotta feel it. Mm. He has forged your name. And he blue was pissed, like he forged my name, bro. Mm. Now he's getting the, you know I've been done wrong. Now you want to exit Instagram. Right. So you brought blue to me. I did two interviews with him. You know, the first interview, he said, I'm signed to Boosie. The second interview, he said, I'm not technically signed to Boosie. Like my situation is like, it's it's more difficult than contracts. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's really more like. Of it's not really contracts. It's like loyalty. Like you know what I'm saying. It's like, it's like more the contracts because like I'm not technically signed to Boosie. I'm just signed to him. Like just because like we just tied in. You feel we tied in. Like I said, he let me sign my other deal. You know what I'm saying. He let he let me go to sign my new deal. You feel me? I just. You know what I'm saying? He, I just let him keep what was in the contract. Like what, however many albums and stuff like was in the contract. Like I still honored that. You feel me? And then when you reacted to it and things started to kind of heat up, Blue tried to say he he did these Instagram posts saying that uh, I'm this white man that's getting these two black men to fight each other. They always say for that. for my own amusement or some sort, and I'm like, okay, fuck this. Like I'm not, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I'm usually quiet about this thing, but I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm not. You're not putting this on me. Right. <laughs> you know, you what you said was the reason why Boosie's mad, and because of y'all's situation, which I'm not involved with at all. Right. I don't have any piece of whatever deals, contracts that y'all got. I just do interviews. Right. Right. So I had to put up the receipts. I remember I told you, I said, I'm going to yeah. do this. Yeah. You okay with this? You're like, yeah. yeah, go ahead. I'm like, all right, I'm doing this. Yeah. And I put up the whole thing and then he called me afterwards. And he was like, yo, my bad dog. I'm, I'm just mad. You know, I don't really know you like that. So I'm like, that, that's fine. You can say what you want to say. Don't don't paint me as a as a racist that's trying to like cause black men man, to Man, Blue fight even know I was done wrong, man. He didn't say it a million times, bro. But he keeps saying that I didn't forge your name. Like, I know you didn't know nothing about the deal, but I didn't forge your name. So I, I had to tell, I had to try to break it down to him. Like, I don't even think he, he he knows how the streets go and I, he knows how facts go. If you watch somebody forge somebody's name, you sign that same contract mm -hmm. and you watch somebody forge somebody's name, you're accessory to the fact. You you're you're just as guilty as the as the next person. If somebody go to kill somebody, but somebody stays in the car and the other person drives, you both get that murder charge. If you go in the bank and one person hold a gun up and the other one stand by the door with the guns, if both of y'all get caught leaving, you still a part of that crime, bro. Right. Yeah. And so for you to act like you had nothing to do with this. I feel that's a weak move, man. I just feel that's weak, man. Here is my issue with Blue right now. When you got locked up. Yeah. I mean, me and you talked about this yeah. already. Blue texted me and he said, Boosie needs 50000 for his lawyer fees. And was a straight lie. And he said, he said, I'm putting uh, up. This nigga is an actor. He said, I'm putting up fifty. And Boosie wants you to put up the other 50. And I couldn't call you and ask you that. And you got to understand how stressed out I am at this point. Like, damn, I got 50,000. You my man. So if you he need wanted it. You to, he wanted you to put this in the interview. <laughs> look, look, like, like, I'm like, okay, if Boosie needs it, that's my man. And he's been there for me. So I'm going to have to figure out a way to, to come up with this. But my thing was like, 
all right, well, if this is true, I'm going to have to talk to Boosie, right? Yeah. Because we, me and you have a relationship. So right. I'm not just going to have a third person that I'm going to send 50000 to. Yeah. So I'm sitting here going, like, all right, 50000 this, this is a lot of money. I mean, yeah, I probably have... with TQ texting you. No, no, it was blue. <laughs> it was blue. It, it, it was it probably blue. was in on it. It was, it was blue. It was blue. So I'm like, well, shit. Well, let me just leave it alone and, and see how this develops. And when, when you know, when Boosie, when I can get on the phone with him or when he gets out, we're going to have a conversation. So the next time me and you had a conversation was at your house yeah. in Atlanta. And I showed you that text. And I said, yo, did this come from you? And what'd you say? I say, I know nothing about this. Yeah. That is an actor, bro. That, 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 is, that is somebody who conscience is killing him. What I did right there, I called, I called, I called my mother. I called him. Yeah. Because he was saying, I guess he was talking to, to, to the mother and your girl or whatever. No, he said he was talking to the mother of my, of my baby or whatever. I called him. Then I called, I, called, I called my baby mother. No, we never talked to Blue. Then I called Rajiv. We, Here we, we go. never, we so, never talk. So, so I'm looking, I'm looking at this the text dude is right a now. Character On June life. 14th, he said, "Boosie needs 100k for his lawyer for his federal case. I got 50k. Can you put the other half?" He called me today. I said, "Well, I need to check with my CFO. What's he charged with?" He said, "He's fighting a federal case for those gun charges. Let me know." I said, "Okay, I'll hit you tomorrow about it, but I don't need to talk to him directly about it." And he said, "I got his mama number. I'll connect y'all tomorrow." And I'm like, okay. And I hit him. They said, do you get bail? He said, you got a hearing tomorrow. I'll let you know the results. I said, okay. And then that was the last time we talked. And that was uh, back in June. But, Dude, but you're telling me that none of this is true. So it, had I come up with the 50000 where would this 50000 have gone? Like, who, who, who would have gotten it? We got a whole new situation now. Now you, you got, got a whole saying? new situation. I got you a whole new situation. Send that to a bank account that had him and TQ on that motherfucker. Yeah, I, I have no idea. But when you told me that you had no idea, my jaw dropped. I'm like, are, are you serious right now? Ask my lawyer. When my lawyer gave me, when, my, when, my, when I called my lawyer and the other lawyer, when they told me the number, the money was wired in 10 minutes. Right. You have the money to fight your case. Bro, the money you're, you're was fine. The money was wired in 10 minutes. Yeah, it, it honestly didn't make any sense because I'm like, 50000 ain't a lot to Boosie. Like, like, why would he need 50000 right now? I like, pissed 50000 <laughs> <laughs> no cap, bro. No, nah, like, I feel you. Like, bro. What's like, that Jay Z line? Was fifty thousand a motherfucker like me? Can you please bro, remind like, me? My lawyers was paid in like that, bro. Yeah, as they should be. Like that, bro. You know, like I was when you showed me that, I was like, bro, this dude is going to the extinct, extinct, bro. That mean he wanted, he wanted, he's trying to get verification. He's trying to get, make it look like he has a heart. Well, if I went to jail and I got out, why you still ain't sending that 50000 So the 50000 he claimed he put up, you never got? I never, I never talked to Blue about $50,000. Yeah. I never, I didn't call him. I didn't, bro, it's, it's smoke. And your mom said she don't know anything about that. My mama don't know nothing about this. Nobody, nobody around me knows nothing about $50,000, bro. Like, bro, come on, bro. So when he said he called me today, you didn't talk to Blue in jail? I wish they pulled the feds, pull the jail records up. <laughs> I'm going to ask the feds with this case. Oh, can you pull my jail records up and look for a, 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 a young Blue talking on the phone? This, this like, just makes it, no it sense. Does, it, it's it's I mean, your I mean, conscience. Did he think that I was just going to blindly send 50000 Like, I don't, I'm not that rich. He said, he, bro, they say they feel like I'm closer than you than my brother. They probably did thought that. But I mean, I'm not, that, I'm not so rich that 50000 is just nothing to me. Like, you know what I'm saying? That, that money has to be accounted for. So, so to me, it was like, damn, like, okay. I, but my thing was like, I ain't sending shit until me and Boosie get on the phone. If you got on the phone with me and you're like, Vlad, I really need this. I'm in a fucked up Vlad, spot. Vlad, I have you. I have you on speed dial. Right. Vlad, why I would not call you? Well, you Bro, were in jail. My, pe you were, my, you were in jail. Yeah. my people was in San Diego the whole time while I was in San Diego. Bro, I was talking to the lawyers all the time. Yeah. I could have sent them right down here two hours right. to get fifty thousand dollars. Right. The questions are complicated, but the answers are simple. simple. 
Right. Why do I have to call Vlad when all my people at the hotels waiting? I can send somebody two hours up here to get fifty thousand dollars. Yeah. You're not making any sense, bro. Yeah. You think I'm a I'm a I'm in two it with you? You think I'm finna give you any kind of shell back to say that I asked you for money? Why would I ask fifty thousand when you owed me five million? The questions are complicated. But the answers are simple. Why would I ask you for 50000 I'm going to call and ask you for, in a situation when I'm down, why would I ask you for fifty and not $5 million? Yeah. You fucked me up when you showed me that. Yeah. Then you had proof. Well, I showed you the text. You showed me that. I'm like, bro. Yeah, no, you, you know me, though, man. I don't, <laughs> I don't make up shit. Bro. You know, in the same way that I've said I've never caught you in a lie, have you ever caught me in a lie? No. 20 years? No. But that's real talk, though. Like, bro, yeah. like 50000 and you owe me $5 million. <laughs> Not making any sense. Bro, I, I also didn't like when he said, uh, I'll beat your old brittle bone ass. Yep, yep. But that's what they do, bro. People, people, people like that, bro, they be trying to trick you off the street. That's what a lot of people have done to me, knowing my reputation. They trying to trick me off the streets. A lot of people want me going off the streets, bro. And um, I felt, and I know that, because one, one, one time we was texting, me and Blue was texting back and forth, right? Um, he said some shit that I knew he would send me to prison, bro. He said that I'm glad you talking like this and I got all these texts. Oh, he said that? That's what he said. Oh. I can post this. Mm. Like he said, I'm glad you talking like this because I got all these texts. Um, he said it in so many words, bro. I was going to post that, but I was like, nah, bro. In so many words, he was saying, like, I'm going to tell him. Real shit. Well, is he still on Empire or is he leaving Empire? I don't know. You see, if you saw, if you see the text I post, he said, uh, I'm finna leave Empire, nah. I'm like, damn, now you, you done cut my throat. Now you finna cut the people who gave you the money throw? You a double head snake. Now you finna cut guys in them throw? Like you sent me a text saying, man, I do do this, but I, uh, I'm finna, don't say nothing, but I'm finna leave Empire. Like, damn, you, after guys of them done did this, now you finna leave them, but that's they karma. You know, like, that's they karma, bro. And like, man, I've been I, I've been really trying to get this over with, bro. You know, uh, I called Sauce Walker the other day. Sauce saying, hey, I'm trying to get Sauce to give me a Nima number, like, try to get this over with, man. Um, what, what, what does Sauce Walker have to do with it? I just know Sauce got their number. Whose number? Nima. All the people from Empire. Oh, the Empire. Okay, yeah. So I was like, you know, uh, maybe we can come, you know, give me something and we can, we can get past this. Uh, Cause I just got my lawyers to call up there, man. I I still got to get my money from my Mo Three project. Oh, you never got that. Oh, that came out through Empire. Yeah, that came out through Empire. And um, guys was asking me for my route number. Uh, I guess you know to give me my stuff together, but all this stuff happened. Yeah. And now it just went, you know. So I still got to get paid from that. Um. Uh, and this all could be business, bro. It just went there like that. This all could be business by guys at Empire and Blue them doing all this. I just feel like, man, this business. Y'all can pay me my money and tell Blue, give me, give me nine songs, ten songs. You know, it's business. That's how they go. Give me another album. Well, when when I talked to Blue, what he was saying to me was that y'all two just don't talk. And he's tried to reach out, but you don't want to sit down and, and have a conversation. You're you're hard to get a hold of. You know, the, the same shit that TQ kind of says and so forth. But he, he wants They're to work it out. They're making that up, bro. How, how can you be hard to get in touch with and, and don't want to sit down? You know, 
if I'm on Instagram telling you about I want my money, if you tr if you if you're trying to give me my money, I don't want my money. It's not making any sense, bro. You know, at first they was like, man, we're gonna pay you. You didn't hear nothing from me. I was being quiet on the situation. But when I go to prison, everybody tried to kick me, Vlad. Every now they won't go to trial. First is we're gonna give you, it's talk so well, it's gonna be three million or two million or four million. But after after I go to jail, it's we're going to trial. We're not giving you nothing. We're going to trial. Mm. All my business partners, bro, most of my, not all of most of them, everybody tried to kick me, Vlad. Well, right, because academics, when he interviewed TQ, he actually pulled up the LLC documents and I guess showed that uh, TQ had, like, put your name on them or had, like, re-registered the LLC yeah, and stuff like you that. You know, when they, they, they already knew they was going to do the deal with Empire. Let me tell you how snakish they are to where he had to forge my name. First, three days before they signed the deal, he tried to go to the people in Louisiana and take my name completely off. Huh. He filed the whole thing to take my name completely off of, of, my, of my label. It didn't work. You have to have two signatures. Hmm. It didn't work. So that means now you gotta put Torrance Hatch under this badass, because I'm the owner. You have to put Torrance Hatch on here. That's what he did first. I have proof of this. This is a part of the case. Two days before he signed the contract, he tried to erase me off the whole thing. Get rid of me off the whole thing. So after he couldn't do that, Louisiana takes two signatures. After he couldn't do that, he had to forge my name. After they forged my name, no one still told me what was going on. I'm asking guys, man, is it anything going on with, with, with my artists and you? Woo -de -woo -de -woo. Guys that didn't respond to me for six months, seven months. Hmm. Mind you that if you see my text, guys that respond to me every next 10 minutes, every time we, we, I call them. So I knew something was going on. So I wrote guys, guys, I'm suing, man. I just found out that guys that text me right back. You know, it it was all crazy. Uh, they had all, and after they did the deal, nobody told me nothing. I'm still in the blind. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. I see the my. I'm still mine. I knew something was going on, Vlad. I knew something was going on. Uh, so I ended up getting shot. Oh, it was right that time. Yeah, I ended up getting shot, and um. They had deal to did the deal like maybe. I had did the, they had did the deal like maybe a couple months before that. After I get shot, after they do the five million dollar deal, I get shot. Blue brings me a hundred thousand dollars. That the video that he posted up. Yeah, on Instagram. Yeah. Still, nobody told me about a deal. Nothing has been signed. I'm in the blind, Vlad. You say this hundred thousand is for you being my CEO and believing in me and being a part of my career. I'm like, damn. I had to post it myself. I'm like, damn. Okay. I never got, I'm happy as motherfucker. Who's not happy to get 100,000 in cash? <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy as a motherfucker, like, you know. But all that was, just like all the stuff he's doing, it was his conscience eating him up. We then took five million. Two of it would have been mine. We then took five million. And we gave him nothing. 100,000. We forged his name. Nah, they, they wasn't going to give me nothing if I wouldn't have got shot. That was, like I say, that's your conscience eating you up. We already done forged his name. We already done took his money. But now he's shot up. Let's take him 100,000. Then let's go on Instagram and make it look like I'm the best and nice artist in the world. Vlad, this is called snake moves where we from. This is called the, 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 the snakish stuff you can do. Your conscience was eating you up. Your conscience was eating you up. You wouldn't have gave me nothing. This would have been a quiet secret. Your conscience ate you up, man. What did you think about the whole situation 
of Young Blue allegedly cheating on his wife, and then with the girl, then he ended up canceling his whole tour. Uh, I just feel, uh, I prayed on it, Vlad. I ain't gonna lie, bro. I, I got to a point where I was like, man, I'm tired of hollering. My voice getting, my, I'm getting sore. My, my throat getting sore, man. <laughs> I say, God, man, for what they did to me, punish them and open their eyes. That's what, that was my prayer every time. Mm. Punish them and open their eyes for what they did to me because they didn't have to do it, Vlad. I would have got, I would have got more money out of, out of, out of God. You know, I would have got more money. I'm a hunter. When I go in the room, I take over the room. I would have got more money. You know, uh, they shot at them. That's how I look at it. You got shot at Drake. I mean, you got a you had a Drake record. I would have yeah. got <laughs> I would have brought Drake into me. <laughs> I'd have had Jay Prince at the door. <laughs> I'd have had uh old man at the door. But like, you know, I I when I prayed, I say, man, I'm tired of hollering. I say, God open his eyes and punish them for what they doing. And ever since then, he's been having a fucking he been having, he been having, he been, he been going through it, bro. Like, I think, I think what happens because me and me and academics talk about this a lot is that, you know, if you're a new artist and you sign to a label, another rapper, whoever believes in you initially, and uh, y'all make a hundred thousand the first year, okay, I get fifty, you get fifty, cool, no problem. Make two hundred thousand next year. Yeah, okay, cool. I'll get a hundred. You get a hundred. No problem. But when it turns into ten million, they'll cap you. They'll say, "Well, you know, but you didn't really do that much." You know, I mean, come to think of it, all you really got me was a Vlad interview and a chain. And you know, I did everything else. I paid for my video, my studio time, and you want to answer my phone calls. So even though the deal is this, I think if you got five hundred thousand, I think that's fair, right? I think that's fair. But but even though technically you you owe whatever. Five million, but but they'll cap you at where they think, right? right. What they think is fair from yeah. their point of view, not what the contract says, right? Right. Because here's the thing: here's the thing about the record label business. No one ever talks about the money you invest in an artist that makes zero. Yeah. At no point do you hear people saying, "You know something? I signed to Boosie. He spent fifty thousand on me. No one bought my album, so I'm paying him back that fifty thousand. I'm in a hole. <laughs> You're in the hole." And unfortunately, this is the way that the industry runs, right? It has to run this way because when you put out new artists, if you're lucky, you'll have maybe a 10% hit rate. Yeah. You put out 10 artists, one will hit if you're lucky. Yeah. So the other nine that you've lost money on, that one that you hit has to pay for those. Right. Now, the artists themselves, the, the one that hits will be upset. Well, how come, you know, I got to pay for all these motherfuckers who fail? Because you could have been one of them motherfuckers who failed. That's yeah. just how it works. And it's always going to work this way. It's never going to change because putting out a new artist is the riskiest thing that you could do in business. Right. And that's just how it is. At no point have I ever heard of an artist paying back a label that lost money on him. It doesn't happen. Ever, ever, ever. So unfortunately, when someone hits it big... A lot of times, you know, like a Megan the Stallion. Oh, I'm mad. I got to pay all this money. Well, but Megan, you weren't nowhere until Carl right. Crawford found you. Right. At the end of the day, you could be working at, at and a lot of times, right man, now. A lot like, of times, bro. We don't like to see each other with a lot. I'm talking. I'm think that's real. it. Yeah, black people. We don't like to see. We always in competition. You know, it can, it can be a it can some people will. Rather the Caucasian with won't even say nothing to them about them putting them in debt, taking their money or stuff like that. But they would rather them with it than us. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They would rather them with it than us. And 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 I always feel like that's a that's a sad situation, man. I mean, ninety five percent of these people watching this interview never heard of blue until me. I never heard of Blue until you. You know, 95% of people watching this this video never heard of him until me. You know, I, I was his spokesperson. Right. because Not only he, his CEO. When me and Blue talked, when we, when we actually got on the phone and he was like, no, listen, man, I was already bubbling when Boosie found me and I was buzzing. I had this record and that record, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, 
yeah, but you were buzzing to the effect of getting a Vlad TV interview. He's like, I'm like, you blue, were, you blue, were, blue. you were seven years from a Vlad TV interview. I said, blue, come you on. You know what blue, I mean? The people buzzing across the country, right? In their little city, but can't get a can't Vlad get interview. A Vlad, and you can't buy a Vlad TV interview. That's crazy. You can't buy a. I've turned down fifty thousand dollar offers to be in the chair you're sitting in right now because I've, I've always felt that if you could buy your way onto this platform, the platform ain't worth shit. So if you on here. You've either earned your place or there's someone in a high degree of power that has bartered their way into the situation. Like you did. Vlad, this is my artist. I'm going to do this for you. Put him on as a favor to me and I got you over here. and We got the relationship. I right, cool. Just like how you brought the Nigerian twins. Yeah. And uh, what was the name of the other dude? The, the country dude. Common Tribe. Common Tribe. Yeah. Those were relationship favors that we did together. Right. And you ended up doing an interview as well to kind of right. work out the cost of it and everything else right. like that. And that's right. how it happened. Right. But you can't just sit there and be like, here's 10000 here's 20000 I've, I've turned those, that shit down all the time. You know what I'm saying? So Blue was not at the place of getting a Vlad TV interview. That was all you. And... I hope y'all work it out because, you know, I don't really have anything against Blue. The 50,000 shit fucked me up, though. Like, yeah. I, I'll, I'll be honest. And I, I was going to keep my mouth shut until TQ decided to do all these interviews. But yeah. I'm like, all right, well, fuck it. If TQ's doing shit, then we got to talk about it. Yeah. You know, so Blue, you could blame TQ for the situation. You know what I mean? If TQ had been quiet, I would have been quiet, too. Yeah. And um, next time he does the interview, the world need to ask him, uh, did TQ forge your signature, too, <laughs> on the beat bread deal? Because Blue takes it as like, man, why did you do that, man? Blue asks him like, man, why did you do that? Blue asks him, did, the, did, they, did we recoup yet? He said, no. Hmm. Blue said, show taking a long time to rec recoup those masters. Hmm. Like he is a, like, he is a, on Song View, if you pull it up, on Song View. He says he has written 101 songs for Young Blue. He has co-writers to 101 songs written by Young Blue. I posted this on my Instagram. He says he has 101 songs he's helped Blue write. TQ. This is on, this is on, this is on black and white. Okay. He owns his publishing on the Vice Plate. Blue, Blue don't even know Vice and Plate is TQ company. Huh. He owns his writer's share. He's taking all blue kids' money, bro. He's never, and, and, and not because me and Blue haven't been talking or whatever, but Blue makes his own music. Yeah. The motherfucker talent. Yeah. TQ is not making those songs. He has no talent, Vlad. He can't play sports. He can't play checkers. He can't play spades. <laughs> checkers. <laughs> he has, you know, one of those guys who's born with no talent. He can't make music. He hangs wall mounts. How did you write a hundred young blue songs? Does he look like he can, he can, he can, he can make those songs that blue make? He's taken all blue kids' money, bro. Mm. The publishing, everything. I'm suing him for that. Well, hopefully it works out, man. Cause honestly, I'm I'm tired of hearing this this back and forth. And hopefully You ain't been hearing me lately. No, you're right. You're you ain't right. been hearing no. me lately? Well, no, it's been spilling out a little bit. Here like, and there. bro, like... Once the TQ shit came out, and suddenly you're seeing other shit, because, you know, like I said, uh, academics pulled up the LLC. He trying to like, pay his lawyers, man. Yeah. He trying to... And, and, and he, he, he keep getting suits. He keep getting suits. They going to keep on coming. Yeah. They going to keep on coming, bro, but... Man, he... he what, he... what he does on paper to people is sad, bro. And now Blue, when I told him I was suing him for B-Bread, because his signature got forged, Blue like, man, I'm finna get off the ground, man. <laughs> I'm finna get, because I'm finna hit him with that. Like, it's your, now it's happen to you. Yeah. How do you feel? Yeah. When somebody forges Jeremy Biddle. That's his name. I know Blue is pissed right now. I've been trying to, he's been trying to stand up for TQ. And TQ, you done did this to me too. I would get off the ground too. All right, let's switch gears. 
we, we've covered this enough. Let's switch gears. There was a video that came out with Sexy Red in bed with a man with an ankle monitor. And people try to say it was you. I was pissed. <laughs> I was pissed. I say that fat ass ankle is not my ankle. You saw that hair ass ankle. It's like, bro, I was pissed. <laughs> I was pissed. People just love to get, bro, I was pissed. Well, because, you know, Sexy Red is pregnant right now. So is that is that your baby? <laughs> <laughs> it's baby number nine with Sexy Red. Playing cold with that bullshit, man. <laughs> yeah, Sexy Red, like, that's my sister, man. That's, that's like oh, my you little, know her? That's like my little sister. I don't really know her, but... It, when we see each other, we holler at each other. That's like my little sister. Okay. See, like girls like that, I ain't never, that, that ain't never been my stilo. Yeah. They always been like girls who I grew up with in the project, the real gangster bitches like Six and Red. They always been like friends to me. Like, yeah. they beat bitches up for me, bro. Like, you know. <laughs> not not my style either. Yeah. I, I've never had a sexy I always red. like the cute, light skins, you know, the, the what different from what I saw every day. You know, you got to hand it to her, man. As someone who is not traditionally attractive, you know what I'm saying, but has the confidence uh, to she's call attractive herself to a lot of people. Well, but, but I'm saying, but like the fact that her confidence, I think, is what makes her attractive more so than the physical part. You know what I mean? That the fact that she could call herself sexy red, and she's like, "Fuck, I, I look great in person. I look, I'm fine as hell in person," and is willing to just throw it all out there. You know, the fact that she's pregnant and still doing shows in a half top. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I, I remember on Twitter, I said, Sexy Red will do shows until she's eight months and 29 days pregnant with a half top. <laughs> and it will be completely on brand. <laughs> no one will say shit. <laughs> we got a show coming up in Savannah. Okay. You know, her sex tape was leaked. Yeah. Did you watch it? Yeah, I just made a song, uh, me and... Uh, Club Godzilla, V King. And I said that on the uh, I said that on the on the song. I said Sunday the Sex Red, I hope she get on it. It's just about called me and school toe up. I was like, uh, record me when I eat your pussy, bitch like sexy red. Uh. <laughs> and to everyone out there that don't wanna have a sexy red situation where where someone gets a hold of your phone and leaks out your sex tape. Just don't ever record yourself having sex with your phone. Just yeah. don't, just don't do it. Yeah. That's something I've been pretty good about. Yeah. I just, as many women as I've been with, I just decided never to actually film myself. And that has worked out for me. You've never seen no Vlad sex tape leak or nothing else right, like that. Right, right. That's just something that no one really needs in their life. You just need to keep it in your phone. Well, even then, I don't do it. Because people get into your iCloud. People, you lose your phone, someone gets into it. Yeah, you're right. You know what I mean? I mean, you could use like one of them like old school, like cameras, you know, camera phones. I mean, yeah. camera, video cameras with a, you know, but even then, memory card gets loose. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, unless you're a porn star, you don't need to be taping yourself having sex. I'm just, just saying. feel like, you know, niggas who do that be weak, bro. Them, them, them the motherfuckers who will kill you. What do you mean? Other ones that leak out your sex tape? Yeah, that that's that's the point. That's the next point before they stab you. Really? Yeah, because they're trying to hurt you and diminish everything you got. Right. By they doing that, yeah, that's so foul. If that don't work, that 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 same man will stab the shit out you. Yeah. That's how I feel, man. Like if a if a man do that to a a woman giving you her body and you trying to leak sex tapes to ruin her. Right, because she didn't leak it herself. Nah. From what I understand, it was like a dude that she was fucking with. Nah, bro. So I be feeling like them. That's a hell of a get back, bro. You know something? I, I'm Especially surprised. to a woman got kids. Well, she got a kid, yeah. And her 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 baby father's in jail right now. Yeah, that never leaves. Yeah. That's gonna be the Once again on that run. On that's the, it forever. That's it, bro. I'm actually surprised, cause like, like I said, she she's not the traditional rapper girl. She's not like the, the made up, you know, Nicki Minaj looking, you know what I'm saying? Little Kim looking like she, she, she's a hood chick. Right. And, and she's gotten to 
kind of the highest levels right now. I mean, she's opening up for Drake. She's on Drake's new album. Yeah, she top. She she top. She, 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 she top she, she the food she, she, Right now, like I did a poll on who's the hottest new female rapper. It was like her, Ice Spice, uh, Lotto, and Glorilla. She won. Yeah. And it was like a thousand people voted. You know, I mean, yeah. this is this is you know a big audience. So. I'm surprised that she actually is keeping the baby right now. You would think that it'd be a time, you know what I mean? Like, I'm I'm pro-choice. But if a woman doesn't want to get an abortion, she don't have to get one. But if there's ever a time to, to get one, it probably this would be a good time because she needs to maximize this run that she's on right now. You don't know how long this run is going to last. That's what everybody else would do. That's what all the other ones would do. You just say she different. This is a street bitch. This is street bitch. I'm gonna get money regardless, but I ain't getting rid of my baby. Mm, yeah. I'm gonna get money and, and turn and have up a baby yeah. and have a baby. Two yeah. for one. Two for one. <laughs> the baby gonna have everything I wanted to give her. Uh, That's yeah. what Nikki will do. That's what another one will do because it seems like the right thing to do at when you on when you on that high horse. Yeah. But she, well, street bitches don't give a damn about none of that. I didn't got this damn money. You don't see her. Yeah, the camera, yeah, the like, well, phone. Yeah. Here, I ain't going nowhere. Right. That's how my, my street bitch, who I, who, you know, I've <laughs> been around once, once we up. Hey, look. Yeah. I ain't never been this high. People, I ain't going nowhere. Right, with a baby and all. With the baby and all. Two babies with two baby fathers. Fuck it. It don't matter. One of them in jail. Fuck it. It don't matter. Bro. Yeah. Nah, man, good for her, man. I'm, I'm, I, I actually, I've never met her. We've never talked. I, I would love to interview her at some point, but, but I admire what she's pulled off. And, and I also really admire Tay Keith for, for seeing the vision. Like, you know, like that, that first song that he did, Yeah, you know, my, my pussy pink, my booty hole brow, like to see the vision of that early on for a song. And, and she's a little bit off beat and you know what I'm saying? But the fact that it works, Tay Keith is a genius to see that shit. Cause he's, he's, he produces Drake. He don't have to work with some unknown female rapper. You know yeah. I mean? He could just be like, no, I'm just Drake, Big Sean, J. Cole. That's it. No one else. Yeah. <laughs> 100,000 a track <laughs> or else don't talk to me. But yeah. no, he was like, no, I'm going I'm to reach back and find that next new hot artist. And y'all may not see this vision, but I see it. And boom. Shout out to Take Keep. Yeah. For seeing it's that a, It's a new world now. Bro. Yeah. Like, you know, what was... What was you, what used to be trash is and all that, it's not anymore. When know? she said, I'm looking for the hoochie daddies, my son need a new pappy, I fell out of my seat laughing. Like I, that that verse hit me. It's like, damn, like <laughs> she took it up a notch. I mean, world and change. World's changed. Good for her, man. I'm happy. Yeah. I, I'm happy for sexy red. Yeah, I like to see hood hood chicks win. Yeah, of course. It just I, I, everyone's it, rooting for. Her. It remind me of the of the hood chick who used to be like in my neighborhood twerking on the cars and shit, <laughs> talking when we when we in the hood talking about if she ever had money, what she'd do. Yeah, that's what that's what it remind me. Right, of. her it's gorilla. Like, yeah. that wave now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Brittany Renner, she did an interview and she said she slept with thirty five men. Yeah, then I saw again, she said she slept with three in one night. Yeah. That's not adding up. You think it's higher than that? I don't know, but that's kind of not adding up. How old are you? She's probably about 30. 30 times three, 30, and you probably start fucking at 15. So 15 years times 365 days is how many days? She's 31. And just say if you start fucking at 16, 15. How I many? What's 15 times 365 days? It's a lot of days, man. Just Google it. So what? 15 times 365. 5,475. And you fuck three niggas in one night. But you only fuck 35 total? 35 total. But the other 32 were spread out. Okay, well, number one. I don't know. I'm just saying. I, mean, I don't know. Sometimes the answer is. Well, women I'll always, come. women always, you know. She had to be fucking with a nigga like, I mean, I don't, I don't know. It's just when she said, I could have believed her. But when okay. she said three in one night, I had to start multiplying. Okay. Okay. So let me ask you a question. 
That's too many. 35. Yeah, if you're finna ask me that. So, yeah, so bitch, you a hoe. That's, that's too many. Yeah, you a hoe. You a hoe. You a hoe. I don't know. I don't, I don't know how other people think. Okay. But I don't want no bitch that slept with 35 niggas. You know. That's too much. Yeah. What, You've at what, least what? been burnt seven times. What, what's a good amount? Okay, well, well I, hold on. I, I mean, I've gotten burnt and I've... Hey, you're a man. Now. You're, I'm talking about a woman. Okay. Niggas like to stick their dick in raw. You're a woman. Okay. I mean, you're a man. W what's your limit for someone that you can get into a serious relationship with? Uh... Ten? Six, seven. Six, seven. Yeah, six, seven. I like, I, like, I like women who go through it three, four years with a nigga. You know, that's, that shows a lot to me and a woman. You know, that's, that's just, what I, that was just what I prefer. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I don't like women who have three, four niggas a year. You know, uh, you like a nigga to me. That's what we do. A woman has a different perspective and manual than a man and will be judged different from a man, you know? A lot of those women aren't raised right. That's how I feel. Have you ever counted your own body count? Nah, I can't. I've been rapping since 15, 14 years old. So it's in the hundreds. I've been rapping since 14 years old. Over a thousand? <laughs> I've been rapping since 14 years old. I've been a DJ. Especially my men every day. I mean? I, I, I've been a DJ since 2002, so, you know, 20 years. I mean, yeah. I mean, once, once you're in the industry, it's, it's just different. Yeah, it's different, it's but just, just different. a woman and a man, it's different. It's different. I don't, I don't give a damn. A woman and a man will always be in my mind. I might be wrong to everybody else, so y'all don't, don't judge me because this is boosted way of thinking. We was raised, I'm a Southern Baptist. We was raised that that little girl can't do what that little boy do. Mm. That teenage boy can't do what that teenage girl do. Mm. Little girl can do. And that's just how that's just how it is. Okay, so you mean to tell me that you get in a relationship with a woman and y'all starting to get close and okay, yo, this is someone that I could really spend a lot of time with and I'm serious with. And she tells you, you know, Boosie, uh, I've slept with 10 men. And I'm 30. Would you be like, you're a dirty whore, get out of my face? Nah. <laughs> well, you told me your, your limit is six or seven. Nah, I, I mean, 10 is, not, is 10 is not that bad. Okay, but you just told me. I say, I, say, I say six or seven is what I would want. Okay, but you'll settle for 10. I'm not, that doesn't mean I'm going to settle with her for 10. Okay. You know, I, I, I didn't fuck bitches got... Plenty bodies. Oh, yeah. You know, I'm talking about bodies probably longer than my fucking career. <laughs> you know, but, but you're talking about what I would want to. Yeah. Well, what, what I would want to take home and, and have a serious relationship and wife right. and things like that. It's certain steps for that. Who you fucking, it, I don't give a fuck. Right, yeah. If we fucking, I don't as, give a as fuck. As long as they have a clean STD test. That's the, yeah, part. I don't that's, get, that's the really important like, part. Like, that doesn't, that yeah. means now, nothing I, I to know, me. Yeah, listen, I've, I've been with women. I'm talking about the- a Astronomical body I'm talking counts, about so. the woman who <laughs> I'm, I'm sharing my life with, I'm sharing my secrets with, I'm sharing, yeah, I'm yeah. sharing everything with. That's who I have standards for. But if we just banging- It's whatever. Bitch, I don't, I, bitch, you can, it, it doesn't matter. You can, bitch, fuck, you can fuck someone as you leave my house. Bitch, <laughs> bitch, bitch, go get in the shower. <laughs> well, you had done a post at one point talking about you wanted a surrogate for your ninth baby. Yeah, yeah. Tell me about that. Uh, well, at one point, um, my little baby, my 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 my, my boo ain't she ain't gonna have a baby for me because uh. A lot of stuff was going down. I mean, she was at a point where she was taking off with her career. So you know how when people get taken off with their career, they don't want to be pregnant. Yeah. So uh, unless you're sexy red. <laughs> <laughs> whole whole different story. But go on. But uh, but uh, <laughs> but yeah. So I had started looking for a surrogate, man, and uh, I had a few meetings with a couple of them, but uh.
I think I done got a mind right, bro. I mean, I mean, I ain't. I don't want to put no baby in anybody, you know. If, yep. it, if it is, you know, I I rather be. But the only girl I ever really stepped out with, you know, I rather be her. Uh, but I'm gonna have a baby, man. I'm, I'm baby sick. I ain't never went seven years. Oh, this is the longest you've gone with, with no baby? Yeah. <laughs> I ain't never went seven years. I mean, hey, man, it's never too late. Look at uh, Robert De Niro and uh, Al Pacino. Robert De Niro and Albert Dane playing, bro. Like, man, bro. They like, got that dusty sperm getting man, to the egg. Bro, like, bro, like, <laughs> <laughs> that old ass cobweb sperm that made its way. <laughs> And they're new fathers right now. Yeah, bro. But I mean, I don't want to be that old having children. See, yeah, shit. You never know, man. I mean, I, I, but I done got to a point where most of my kids live in Baton Rouge. Man. And I'm in a big ass house, man. Empty, bro. All them, I built that house for them kids, man. Yeah, I can and, tell. And I won't, man. I won't, man. Don't worry. That, hey, I'm going pig lip to poke sausage. What does that mean? It's a hood saying, I ain't putting nothing on Pig lip to poke sausage. <laughs> what does that mean, though? Yeah, don't worry about it. Okay. I'm going pig <laughs> lip to poke sausage. All that other shit, I ain't got time. I'm skeeting. Pig lip to pork sausage. To poke sausage. I'm going to look this up. Skip meat to meat. <laughs> Hold on. I'm about to. No Hold on. Pig lip to pork sausage. Yeah. That's a hood slang. That means no rubber. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Raw dog. A pig lip look like a pussy. Okay. I got you. You, you got me on this one. You got me on this one. <laughs> what do you think about Tyler Perry uh, telling black women that they shouldn't have such high standards for their men. He said that if she pays the mortgage, it's okay if you pay the light bill. He basically telling people, women just follow your heart, not the money. That's what I think Tyler Perry is saying with that. I think he's basically telling women, follow your heart, follow a man that makes you happy to be around him, give you peace instead of going for the money. Because if you get money, if, if you start loving a man for money, when that money's gone, what do you love him for? I get that, but the last time in my life, and I'm 50, and I've been in a lot of long-term relationships, the last time that I split any type of bill with a woman was when I was in college. My college girlfriend, we were both broke college students, they were working part-time jobs and got a little bit of money from our parents. And we were staying in a one-bedroom apartment. That was the only time that I ever split my bills. Once I graduated college and started making my own money, I have never been in a relationship with a woman where I've asked her to split any type of bill, whether we were living together or otherwise. Don't split. You know what I mean? If we're living together, I got it all. And, you know, and if I had the right woman, she would help me make more money. But I never asked her to pay any type of bill ever in my life. And I feel like any man that does that is a weak man. Right. But that's just me. Yeah, that's you. That's me. Yeah. And I understand not everyone is as financially well off as me, but I've also gone through broke periods. But even then, I felt like, well, you know, if I can't afford to take care of a woman, I shouldn't have a woman right now. Right, right. I, mean, I was I, raised like that. Too. Yeah. Like, I was you know raised, what I'm saying? That's just me. A woman never helped me pay a bill. Exactly. And, and I feel that men that do that are just weak ass men. Yeah. And I'm sorry for everyone who I'm insulting right now who are Vlad TV viewers, but you just need to step up. And you also are going to have a very different type of caliber of woman if she's not struggling to pay half, half, half the bills. I remember K Slate, my man, rest in peace. He, he did an Instagram post. He said, ladies, if you have a man and you're financially struggling, you're single. Because if you have a man, you shouldn't be financially struggling. That man should step in and take care of whatever, whatever you need to do. Right, I agree. But we also got to raise our daughters to be independent also. We got to raise our daughters to not yearn for a man who only has money. 
That's why you have to raise that child to be intellectual, smart, and to be, you know, uh, well off because you don't want to want you don't want a child growing up looking for a man with money to take care of her. Yes, but but you don't want her to settle for a bum ass man. A bum ass man. Right. That's and, why you have to raise her right. to know her to know her worth. Right. But I will tell you from everything I've ever seen in life that your female daughters who have been raised by you and you are their father figure. And, and whenever they need something, you are there as the man to take care of it. When they get to a certain age and start to date, they're going to find it very weird to date, somebody to date who someone who's not like this. Right. Because you are the male right. dominant force right, right. in their life right. up until they're 18, 19, 20, and even farther. Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. So, yes, you, you don't want to raise a woman to be chasing the bag, but, she, but the example you you're setting. You want to raise her to know her worth. You're, you're, you're raising and setting an example, which is more than anything you could say. They're seeing, yeah, you know, the man is the provider. He takes care of everything. So I, if, if when I'm looking for a man, I want someone kind of like my father. Right. Right? So whether you are trying to do it or not, you've already set the example for your daughters to look for a certain type of man. And I think that's a good thing. I mean, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't, you want, you want your daughter to, to have the best yeah. all, all the time. You don't want your daughters to be pimped out by a man. Right, right. That, right. That's what I'm really right, saying. Right, right. And honestly, when I hear this, if a motherfucker can only pay a light bill, he just pimping, he just pimping basically. That's yeah. what I think. Yeah. He's just sitting on the couch. And I, I've known lots of women like this who, who's bum ass boyfriends or whatever, just play video games all day and complain and make excuses. Oh, I'm going to start my own company and never do shit. And the woman is working a job and, and she's getting yeah. more and more sick of that man until That's she- That's why black women have become so independent. Yeah. I mean, women all, all across the world have become so independent because of fucking deadbeats. Yeah, it's, hard, it's hard to date outside their race and, and everything can, else I like that. I can do bad by myself. Exactly. Exactly. Um- I remember we had talked about uh, that King Von serial killer documentary. Yeah. What I didn't realize was that someone made something like that about you. Oh, yeah? Yes. Uh, by uh, a YouTube channel called Swamp Stories. And there's a video about you called Rap's Original Serial Killer, exposing the evil life of Boosie in detail. How does that make you feel that someone's putting this type of foul shit out about you? I don't feel no kind of way. I don't let that shit get to me like that. I didn't hear worse of shit than that. <laughs> I don't let that shit get to me because I know most of that YouTube should be fabricated stories. I know. I just know it because shit that I didn't looked into, like they wrong is. Like, that shit, it, it never be on point, bro. So, uh, I mean, when I, when I, uh, I never heard about that. I know they they told me, I guess when they came out, they like, Boosie, they got a documentary about you. Uh, they, it, it, they was just in details about it, but I was like, yeah. Yeah, man, listen, people, there's so many videos about me at this point. Like, there's so many, like... <laughs> The annoying part is sometimes they use my own footage, <laughs> you know, to talk shit about me. That's the that to me is the more annoying part than the fact they made a video. The fact they're using my own footage. And there's not a lot I could do about it most times unless I file a lawsuit or whatever else. But yeah, I mean, unfortunately, being out in the public, people will go and just create these foul narratives about you. And there's and pe some people believe it. Yeah, they what they do is they take they take they take a lot of my stories from people who they thought was in my circle who really envy me now. Mm. And it looks factual because people probably heard them around my circle or something like that when they never was around my circle. You know, some people you might be seen on a picture with, 
doesn't mean he was in the back seat. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm no, saying? I, I feel you, man. You know, you can't, the world can't take a lot of what people be saying as truth. And 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 that's what that's what that that's what they do a lot to me. You know, you have people from other states be speaking on things that happen that that they think that happened with me, and they be all wrong. Yeah, and unfortunately, there's like people that I don't talk to anymore because they've gone and done podcasts and told all my personal business. Me neither. You know what I mean? So it's like, mm -hmm. and then they'll reach out. Uh, to ask, see how I'm doing, it's like, motherfucker, I can't talk to you. Like, whatever I say, you're going to turn into a goddamn video. So, yeah, yeah. Now we can't even talk. And we used to be cool at one point. So, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, for example, I mentioned. And it'd be weird because they might get on there and say this and that about me, like, how they were, uh, things I, they say I've done. If you know I don't go for that, then why are you up there doing that? Yeah. It's weird to me. I mean, look, me, me and Turk were cool for a while. I had done a few interviews with him. We had put out this one interview, and he didn't like one of the titles. And um, so I said, you know, he tried to call me. I said, I can't talk right now. We could text, but I'm, I'm going to call you when, when I free up. It was about him uh, doing the whole gay games thing. So everyone plays gay games. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, he was a little upset over the title, even though he said it. But I'm like, yo, I'm going to call you when, when I free up. I called him. We had a conversation. We cleared everything up. I'm like, yo, I'm, I'm going to bring you back on the show. I'm going to even give you an appearance fee, whatever else, whatever else. Brought him back. Did the appearance fee, everything else like that. Then my man was like, yo, you know that one of your phone calls with Turk is up on his YouTube channel. And I'm like, man, that's too bad. Now I can't rock with Turk anymore. Yeah. He records my phone calls and puts them on YouTube. Yeah. You know, so when when I heard, for example, because you know, you know, of course, you know, BG is out. Yeah. And I remember seeing this thing with like Birdman yeah. talking about a Hot Boys reunion. And he was saying Turk probably ain't gonna be part of it. Yeah. Because he don't really rock with Turk like that. He don't have a relationship with Turk. Yeah. I think it's a little shit like this. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Because me and Turk were fine for years. Yeah. He got in his feelings, decided to record my phone call. And it's just like, why? Why? Like, we don't have that type of beef. Like, you know what I mean? And even if we had beef, I don't do shit like that. Now now we can't have a conversation about it. Because I figure you're going to record the phone call or you're going to screen capture the text or, or whatever the hell else. And I'm good. But but people, I don't know. I don't know why people do shit like this. I wanted to see that high boy reunion too. But I mean, it's going to happen though, right? Just without Turk. I don't know. I don't know about that. I don't know. Well, you, you know, BG's out now. Yeah. Have, have you physically seen him yet? No, nah, I ain't physically seen him. Okay, you I talk to him every, you talk to him. every other day. Every other day? Every other day. How's he doing? He's doing great, bro. Yeah? Yeah, he's doing great. <laughs> it's my boy. He's doing great. He's doing great. How do you think uh, prison has affected him being in for so long? Um, I mean, I feel he should be saluted more than he's saluted. Somebody to do that much time and don't take nobody with you. Don't point no fingers. Right. Don't come home blaming nobody for what they did. That's a special, not just a special G, a special human being. You know. Uh, he needs to get out more, though. That's the thing. I know he's on Instagram a little yeah, bit but else. He's, but he's he, in the house. He's on house he's, arrest. He, okay, he's on house arrest. I not think, house I think, arrest. Not house arrest. Halfway house. Halfway house. Well, I think once he gets out and starts to really get his face out there, starts getting more music out there. Because yeah, you guys yeah. are supposed to do a joint album, right? Yeah, yeah. We, 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 we bought three, four songs in. Okay. But, you know, he can't go to the studio right now. Mm. Probably once every three weeks or something like that. So, you know. Uh, he's on house arrest. He's in a better place than he was a few weeks ago. You know what I'm saying? He's not in prison anymore. So I'm sure yeah, he's he, very happy to be on house yeah, arrest. Yeah, he's he not in prison. Or halfway house, I mean. Yeah. He's in a halfway house. And uh, I think he's surprised on all the puss ass shit that go down in this world, bro. Like, what you guys talk about? Yeah. Yeah, he'd be surprised, man. Like, 
man, they letting this shit go like, yeah, bro. Like, you know, like, it's different out here, man. You know, that's what I be telling them. Like, it's different, man. Well, um, T.I. did an interview uh, on the We in Miami podcast, and they asked him about the joint album with you. You know yeah. what I'm talking about the interview? Yeah. You, you watched it? No, I ain't watched it. Oh, you ain't watched it? No. Okay, well, so when they asked him about the joint album, the T.I. and Boosie joint album, what he basically said was he doesn't know if it's going to come out because at the time it was sort of a moment and there was energy behind it, but then... You know, the whole, you know, snitching thing kind of put a monkey wrench in it and it kind of slowed down the momentum. And and he he didn't say it's not coming out, but he's like, he's not sure because he s- said that it just takes a lot of energy to put out a project like that. Right. How do you feel about it? Um, I feel he right. I feel he right. I mean, but. I still wanted to come out. I, 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 one day I asked, man, what we gonna do about the album? Uh, he was like, we gonna get to it. Uh, but, uh, he might be right, man. He might be right. Uh, I thought it was a good time to put it together after, after Young Thug said that. Uh, oh, he wants to see the album. He wants to see yeah. the album, but. Uh, you know, me and Tip, we doing we doing a lot of shit with this movie thing. Oh, okay. With these movies and shit like that. I got one dropping on my birthday next month called No Honor, Loyalty or Love. He just dropped one, The Apartments. Uh, he did reach out to me a couple of days ago about, uh, what Tip was talking about? About the sh- uh, thing we did with our kids mm. and shopping that, so... Uh, I feel he right, and I just feel like uh, I just feel like Tip at a point where he ain't really tripping on that music shit like you talking right. about, like you know, that movie money be different, bro. Yeah, man, I'm still waiting for my cameo in one of your movies. I got you. You got me. Yeah, you gonna play somebody at the store? Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you gonna play somebody at the store? I'm gonna get somebody to come in there and rob it. Okay. Rob it and shoot you so the, so they okay. get so they get some validation. <laughs> All right, I'll get shot. I'll get shot to Boosie. Well, let me know. So our next interview, I want to fly down Atlanta again. Okay, I so, got I got a uh, I got a uh, I got a movie premiere uh, November twelfth. All right, Atlantic Station. All right, that's what it is. Well, you had talked about how you turned down a quarter million dollars to perform at a gay event. So that was a real thing. Yeah. I mean, listen, I don't know exactly how much you get booked for, but that seems like way higher than a usual booking, boosy booking. Yeah. Arenas, I get nine to a hundred, so. Okay. But this is even way more than that. Yeah, but I don't sell, I don't sell my soul for money, Black. Okay. So. I'm not, that no, money I, I, doesn't I, make me. I, I got it. Do that. You I, know. I, I I know you, so I, I I get it. You know that. I mean, did you think about it though for a little bit? When, I didn't think no, about it. Was it like, you no. know, I I kind of took it as an insult. Did you think it was a real offer? Or do you think they were just trying to see what you would say? Um, because that is a lot of money. I think it was a real offer. Huh. Yeah, I think it was a real offer. But I also thought they were doing it to try to clown me. Also, yeah, you know. Like, oh, look, I didn't look, think of, I didn't I didn't I didn't have one thought about it, it was a no. no. Yeah. Well, uh young Jack got interviewed on my platform. And then you know like bro, you like you got to understand that when you speak up for the if you when you speak up against something, people always try to turn that against you. Hmm. And I always keep that in my mind with anything I do. Whatever you speak on, People will try to do anything to prove you wrong or prove your, your fakeness. People will do that. Hmm. You know, the oh, first- say, oh yeah, oh his stance ain't real. Look, yeah, he, he just it was just a dollar amount. Yeah, and so once it, that dollar amount hit that amount, then he changed his whole. If anybody uh, say that they don't agree with that community or anything, somebody will find any least thing you do, you're gonna be gay. You're gonna be bullied. You're gonna be gay. 
if you do this, if you say some, some of the stuff I've said has has not been harmful. It's been, I've, I've said before I've said it. I, I don't mean to harm people by it. But just by me having a speak how I feel about the situation, people will always try to say I'm gay or something like that. Yeah. You know, that's why the people who real now are endangered species. Nobody wants to be around them. Mm. People are afraid of them. Other people are afraid of them. People don't wanna, people don't wanna spend money with them certain ways. Being a real nigga, nah, you're, it's like you're an endangered species. Hmm. Well, we interviewed Young Jock, my man Sean Prez did the interview, and yeah. he said he would do the same thing because he don't want to have men look lustfully at him. I may not be comfortable rapping this song and this man is looking at me with lustful eyes, with his nipples out, <laughs> with lipstick on, <laughs> rapping my lyrics to me. I Right, yeah. you know what you're going into. Yeah. If you're gonna take 250 to do a concert full of gays, you might as well take a dick for 10 million. <laughs> Nigga licking the lollipop, looking, you might as well bend over in the bathroom and take a dick up your ass for 10 million. If money means that much to you. Right. If money means that much to you, you might as well throw it all away. Don't shoot you with it. Yeah. And go perform in front of them and something you don't agree with, you're already going against your standards. Take the 10 million and put a dick in your mouth. <laughs> Shout out to Dwight Howard. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Yeah, man, listen, I, I've always felt that I had, um, you know, morals and lines that I don't cross. Like, you know, I wouldn't do a celebrity boxing match. I, I wouldn't do a, a, a sex tape. I don't really care how much the money was. Doesn't matter. It's just not my thing. I'm 50. You know? Yeah. I, I know who I am. Yeah. I, I've had 50 years to figure it out. Yeah, you and, gotta and, have, if you don't have morals or loyalty, you, you stand for nothing. Exactly. Exactly. And people have seen me, man. I, I, I stand my ground. Like, if you, you don't have see that, me fold. You stand for nothing in this world. Yeah. Now, I've obviously made mistakes and I've, you know, I've changed my point of view, but but there are certain things people have seen me, I stand firm on. Yeah. Who I am, you know, my my background, my- And the same people like criticizing, that. it just be crazy, man. Yeah. I, I saw some models under there like, uh, I would have given you, a, okay, well, let me give you 10,000 and bite your fucking a hole in your face. <laughs> You're a one. You're a model. Let me bite the side of your fucking face off for ten thousand for two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Now your whole fucking face look like this for the rest of your life. Don't criticize me, baby. Let a nigga bite your fucking face off. <laughs> you want some fucking money so bad, and see what that ruin your image. Well, well, if you wouldn't take two hundred fifty thousand dollars to perform at a gay event. How do you explain this, this photo right here? Oh, you, I posted it. <laughs> that was right after that. <laughs> bullying, look at it. Bullying. You saw what I put on Twitter? I say at this point, <laughs> y'all just want a reaction out of me. I put it on Twitter. I put the same picture on Twitter. They say Boosie and the Baton Rouge Gay Pride Parade. <laughs> I put the same. If you disagree, they will bully you. You just made a whole thing of me at a parade Eight, nine different pictures of me with lines in my head, <laughs> earrings everywhere, all in my eyes. You're bullying wait, me. Wearing a rainbow outfit. Rainbow, <laughs> rainbow, overall. Overalls, rainbow overalls. You're bullying me <laughs> just because I said no. Yeah. If you don't agree, you will get bullied or they will say you're one of us. Well, let me ask you a question. There was a video you posted where you went off on a man who offered to give you a massage. Yeah. At a Miami beach. Yeah. I've gotten lots of massages from men. It, I've it, never. It, it don't bother me. I've never. My, my chiropractor is a man. He, he massages me all the time. Okay. To well, me, I don't think it's a big deal at all. Well, to me, I do. Okay. I'm not letting no man rub my shoulders and do all that shit. 
Man, listen. You heard me? I'm not. Hey, you ain't finna rub. Because I had, I had a massage from a woman for, for what, two years ago. Okay. My daughters, my oldest daughters, them. Okay. They got a massage for my birthday. Got a, got a woman to come massage me in her truck. In the, in the big old truck thing. I got you. Took all my clothes off. Okay. Vlad, I felt violated. <laughs> Vlad, massage me, Vlad. I'm like, what the fuck? Okay. No. Get your ass away from me, John. <laughs> know what I told him. I was already drunk on the beach. I was getting drunk. <laughs> he gonna come, do you want a massage? I'm from across the track, Vlad. I don't mean no harm. I don't mean no harm, Vlad. The chiropractor can't touch me. I don't mean no harm. Listen, man. I've seen jail stories. Okay. With this, my own eyes. No, I, this is not jail. This, this, this it is... It don't matter. Okay. I might see that, that jail uh, memory in my head. All right, listen. I, I might turn I, around I and get had, this shit out. I have had lots of massages. Well, I haven't. Men, chiropractors. You have and I haven't. Let's right. argue about it. That's fine. I haven't. Okay. I don't feel that makes me gay, though. I don't, I, I, I don't feel do, it do makes me gay okay. because... I, do you consider me gay because I got a massage from a man? No. Okay. No. But I'm not finna take that step of... I don't even like a woman to massage me. Okay, so what about what about when you go to the hospital? When you go to, like, a, you know, go see a doctor and it's a male doctor, they have to examine you or whatever else. What about that? Man, the only thing you I... You had cancer at one point. Did you only have female doctors? Nah, but cancer, nobody never massaged me in cancer. But they got to, they got to, but they got to like. All they do is stick the thing on your heart till you breathe in and out. <laughs> stick the thing on your back till you breathe in and out. Lay you on the motherfucking machine. Let the radiation machine run through you. Only thing they did is put the radiation in you and it feel like you're pissing on yourself. Okay, so you've never had a male doctor have to examine you, examine your chest, examine your back? I just told you. He put the thing on it. Not the cancer. I'm talking about in general. You've been to the doctor multiple times. You must have been shit. doing gymnastics class or something. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't never had no doctor massage me. Okay. No, I, I, I've All right. never. All right. Listen, we can, we can agree to disagree. I personally don't give I a got, shit. I done had diabetes. I, I All I you do is check my blood. Stick I don't my give motherfucking a hand. I, I don't Get care. my blood. I mean, I don't know what. Man, you, listen, I, I'm not there to make a an emotional, I didn't have, I, I didn't an emotional connection with the person who's fixing fixing my back. I remember in New Jersey, I had a fucking chiropractor that would always fix me up. I'd come in, my back was fucked up. He'd crack my neck. He, he'd get my spine aligned, whatever. I'd come out. I, I ain't great. never had them them okay. my them back problems and all that. Shit. Well, not yet. You're getting older though. I ain't never had them. I mean, yeah, you're getting older. I just don't. I don't. I don't want no man. This 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 world this world is different. I don't. A care. lot of people are. I really lot, don't care. A lot of people are that way, and you don't know who's that way. Well, I've never had a chiropractor grab my dick while they're massaging me. I've I never mean, had that. I mean, you don't know, <laughs> you know if his dick rides when he was massaging. Well, you know something. That'd be the last time I would see that particular chiropractor. If that you happened. don't know if his dick rides when he was massaging. <laughs> All right. Well, I never felt nothing hard up against my back when I'm getting a massage. I'm, I'm gonna say this. <laughs> I'm going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, there's a, there's a list going around right now that, that went viral. It was a list of places women absolutely refuse to go on a first date. You seen this? No, nah, no. Nah. So it's a list of 28 places that women refuse to go on a first date. I'm going to give you the list. Cheesecake Factory, Applebee's, Chili's, Chipotle, Olive Garden, the movies, your house, any fast food chain, Buffalo Wild Wings, Wingstop, Red Lobster, a buffet, IHOP, Denny's, the gym, church, Starbucks, coffee dates, ice cream dates, family functions, movie night like Netflix, somewhere that requires a long drive, bowling, nightclubs, hookah bar, a bar just for drinks, Waffle House, or sports events. They got some expensive ass motherfucking <laughs> bitches, huh? <laughs> Shit, they got some expensive ass bitches, though. I mean, that's pretty I much know, everywhere. I was, bro, before I had money, bro, like, shit, motherfucking Red Lobster. You bet you was going to, you was going to Mass Road. You was like, that was like Ocean View. I mean, I don't, it, it, I, the standards, like, I guess they said hi now. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at this list and I've, I've had a lot of first dates at places and a lot like of this. places like a this. A lot of dude. places like this. A lot of places. <laughs> now, I, I, I'll make you some tuna fish. 
I, I, I remember like some dude like posted a list of like places y'all delusional ass bitches think that we're going to take you to. It's like skydiving <laughs> to the bank to give you all my money <laughs> to Dr. Miami to get a BBL. Like it was just like a, you know, like a ridiculous list. I don't know, man. Women, um, women these days have some interesting, I think they got, I mean, interesting, like, you know, bars. They be looking for that, but man, a woman tender, bro. Yeah. A woman tender, bro. If you, if you take a woman, if you take a woman to a park, have fun with her. Yeah. Bring out something you done made. Yeah. Couple tuna sandwiches. Yeah. You're in my high C box drink. The whole ghetto high C. You know, y'all chasing around the park. They'll love that shit better than going. It's just what they have in their head. I don't feel it be in their heart. Did you see that one video that went viral? It was this girl, I think in Atlanta, that went out with this dude. She didn't really like him, but she wanted some oysters. Did you see this video? Oh, yeah. And she was like, I know this nigga ain't taking me to cheesecake. No, 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 no. no. There's that. Oh, okay. There's that, right? But there was this other video where this girl goes out with this dude. Like, yeah, this motherfucker been texting me all week, you know, I, but I finally said yes. And, and she goes, they go to this the seafood spot and she orders four dozen oysters. <laughs> like a dozen at a time, one after another. And she's slurping them all up. After eating four dozen oysters, she orders some crab cakes and some potatoes with butter, a bunch of drinks, and then she gets mad because the dude goes to the bathroom and leaves. <laughs> it just breaks out. And then texts her afterwards and said, I just asked you out for drinks. <laughs> not all, not this whole buffet thing that you just did. I'll sell you the money for the drinks if you want. She said, this bitch ass motherfucker, whatever else. But it was kind of crazy. I mean, women got a lot of women. A lot of women be want, you know, they be want a lot of shit, and uh, everybody ain't got it. And the ones who got it, when you want a lot of shit, we want that in return. You know, bitch, you want this and this and this. Okay, well, bitch, I want you and your friend. <laughs> you know? Both y'all getting oysters. <laughs> <laughs> to hey. me, because you know, because it was like, I don't know, it was like each of the oysters were like $15 or something. To me, I'm looking at that bill and it's probably like, I don't know, maybe about $100 altogether. I'm like, that shit, that ain't shit to me. I wouldn't have. I know, to I you. I would have even blinked at, that, you, at that bill. What about a guy who, who makes it? Yeah. He's a fucking, he's makes a fucking servant. Yeah. No, he works at Waffle House. Yeah. You know, you just met him when he was looking nice. Yeah. He works at Waffle House. He right. can't buy you no motherfucking $140 meal. Right. And pay his rent. Right. It's, it's not going to happen. You got to know what you want. Mm -hmm. If you can't provide it for yourself, you asking for all that what you want. What are you willing to give? Right. You know what women will say? Me. You know? <laughs> women. <laughs> what do I get in return? Me. Women, uh, you know, what you else? can't live Me? with them and you can't live without them. This is I true. love them, though. I love I, them. I love women. Bro. I love women, bro. I, I, I love women. I can't go too long without a woman. I swear to God, bro. Facts. My fucking my fucking house get the big trash here. My bro, everything just get the bro. Especially when it's cold. Oh my God. I, I've never understood, I've never understood men who always just have their boys around and just don't have a woman in their life. I can't do it. You know what I'm saying? It, I can't. It, do that it. to me, I feel like a lot of these dudes are just in the closet. Or dudes are just always going back to jail constantly, constantly, constantly. Yeah. I'm like, I, I need that. Most of my life has been spent living with a woman. You know what I'm saying? Most of my life. I've very, too. very rarely been si totally single for long periods of time. Me too. And during those times, I get very depressed. I get Me very too. lonely. I turn into alcoholic. I turn into all kinds yeah. of shit. Yeah, I start smoking you know? too much weed. Like, yeah, yeah I, I just... I, and I like, like having, feminine women, black. Yeah, exactly. I don't like just bad bitches. Like, you got to be bad and feminine. Right. I just don't like no bitch just wake up and just look. I like a bitch fold clothes, mm. run my water, mm. cook, Yep. iron my clothes. You do that, you got me. <laughs> oh, bitch, you got me. You treat me like my mama. I like a feminine woman. Yeah. I don't like no bitch get fresh and just get fresh, look in the mirror like me and ready to go. Yep. 
I like a bitch coming that bitch in and put a wet towel on my head. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I like I, 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 I like a feminine woman. It's nothing like a feminine woman. That's what you miss in, in a woman. That feminine shit. Rub your feet against my feet in the bed. Mm-hmm. I love that. Don't, oh, man. Bitch, don't sleep way over there. <laughs> I wish you would sleep way over there. <laughs> oh, you got to come, you got to, hey. I love that. Don't, don't sleep way over there. You make me feel like you caught a nut. You like me. You done caught a nut, now you're done. <laughs> Bitch, we laying up. Yeah. Our feet finna rub. Mm. Yeah, feminine. Wash them fucking clothes and fold them. <laughs> you know, you know, uh, you know how there's been that debate that 500,000 or dinner with Jay-Z? What Jay-Z say? Jay-Z say you should take the 500,000. You should take that. Five, 500, who been saying it? <laughs> I've been said it. I, I've been said it. I've been said it. Thank you, Jay Z. They was judging me. Right. Thank you, Jigger. Yeah. If you're watching this, thank you, bro. But you know something? This dude Wayno, he used to work for Rockefeller back in the day. I follow him on Twitter. He said the realest shit ever. He said, "Dudes just want to go on a date with Jay Z. That's the real." Yeah, answer. I said it. I just I I, t- <laughs> I tweeted it, bro. I tweeted it. Two couple Dudes days ago. just want to go on a date with Jay Z. Nah, you're just a group. Yeah, you want to have a date with Jay-Z. If you'll take it, you ain't got shit. Yes. You don't have shit, boy. Yes. And you talking about $500,000 to go sit with a nigga. Is he Jesus? <laughs> you think he Jesus? You a groupie. Uh, let me tell you something. You think he can make water turn into wine? Right. Right. Let me tell you something. 500000 to me is the amount of money that has no effect on my life at this point. I would absolutely take the 500,000. Because, because if you're not you're you're a groupie. Yeah, because what does a dinner with somebody what is that going to accomplish unless you have something extremely specific that you know for a fact that Jay-Z is 100% interested in and the only way to get it to him is through this meeting. You're an idiot if you don't You're take that 500,000. You're still taking a chance. You're still taking a chance. He might say no. He might say no. You know what he'll probably tell you? Believe in yourself. Work hard. <laughs> he might say no, man. Pass the crab, like, the bro, crab roll. <laughs> bro, I, I don't get it, bro. I don't, I don't get it either, man. It. it is some groupie shit. You know, yeah, okay, sure. Certain things happen. But at the end of the day, if there is, this is how I feel. If there Somebody was, can give you all the tools in the world. If you don't know how to use it, exactly. your ass still a mechanic. I'll put it like this. I feel like there's nobody in this world that I can't get to as long as I have something that they need. If I need to have a meeting with Jay-Z, I just need to have something that Jay-Z is interested in. And I could talk to someone that'll get to Jay-Z. I know people that know Jay-Z. I have nothing to meet with him over. If I had dinner with Jay-Z, it would just be a fucking dinner. And that's it. Jay-Z, you know, nobody is more powerful than God. Mm. You can ask God for that 500000 And he'll make that shit appear. Mm. You have faith and you ask God for that same 500000 It will come. Gotta work for it. You're being a groupie. Yeah. You're being a straight groupie. If you take a meeting with somebody, you're really, you're really strange. Yeah. I would think you're a fucking John Lennon character. <laughs> you might the try nigga to, who shot John Lennon. You might try to kill Jay-Z. You might be trying to kill your Jay-Z. <laughs> if I was Jay-Z, I would take that motherfucking meeting. <laughs> Shit. He wants a meeting with me instead of 500. Hey, I'd be thinking all kind of ways. <laughs> I'd be thinking all kind of ways. Yeah. I know what I would have told him. Go take that 500 and give me 200 for setting it up. Yeah. Well, our last interview, you and your daughter... We're going at it. You took her car back. You ended up filming a music video with the car. Yeah. Have y'all worked it out? No. No. Didn't your son, didn't Tootie say that something was worked out or something, or maybe I'm wrong? No? I don't know. Okay. Hell no. So y'all still, y'all still where you are? Yeah, uh, I got I got papers yesterday. Uh, she filed a harassment uh, suit on me. What, what, what is that? Oh, man, I got, bro, my P.O. called me and, like, your baby mama just uh, filed the harassment. Oh, the baby mother did, not the daughter. No, not the daughter. She just filed the harassment. Houston police sent me a 
a thing sh- hmm. saying don't contact her, follow her harassment. Uh, after she leaked my number all over Instagram, she uh she texts me and say, uh, since your fans uh siding with you, now I'm finna leak your address to your home. So I told her, you leak my address, I'm gonna file criminal charges on you mm. for attempted murder, bitch. Mm. Uh so uh um she didn't send that what you call them. Um she gotta talk about what she calling about. She gonna send niggas to Baton Rouge to my address, all kind of shit, bro. So um I DM'd her back like if you leak my address, I'ma leak your grandmother address, your your address, your Texas address, your auntie address, and the addresses of your kids' school. So she uh sent that to the police. Mm. Only my only mine didn't send what she said. Didn't send what she said. She cut it out and sent it uh to the police. And uh, she filed a harassment charge on me. So that's a criminal charge or a lawsuit? A uh, criminal charge. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's another lawyer fee for you, I guess. Uh, nah, it's uh, they uh, the, the Houston PD gave me a warning. Oh, so they're not even prosecuting? Nah, they okay. say if I if I contact her again, I'll I'll be hit with charges. Well, but that that's your daughter's mother. Yeah. So you have to have some sort of contact, like if something happens to your daughter or there's some issue with your daughter, right? I can't have no contact with her. They don't want me to have no contact with her. Uh, But you basically have one less kid right now. uh, I still claim that as my daughter. No, I mean, I know you're claiming her, but I'm saying, but you can't have contact with her. So right now, for all intents and purposes, you don't have a child in your life. Nah. You're you're down to seven now. Nah, she... uh, She she evil, bro. Like man, she. Well, she she's took doing the stand, whatever. She, she took the stand against you in your murder trial. Yeah. So you know, it don't it don't get worse than that. I mean, yeah, it don't get worse than that. <laughs> this is a walk in the park compared to what you've been through. <laughs> she, she was trying to get you the needle. Yeah, she was you know trying to I mean? get that, that needle in my arm. Yeah. You know, I, we talked about this about how you don't like how your son raps about gangster shit when he hasn't been involved in any gangster shit. Uh, Michael Irvin recently went on TV and talked about his son, uh, Tarantino, lying in his raps. He said, you grew up in a gated community your whole life. Who, Michael Irvin's son? Yeah. He rapped? Yeah. Oh, okay. And Michael Irvin was basically clowning him on national television saying, cut that shit out. Yeah. You live in a gated community. Yeah. I live in a gated community. Yeah. It's the softest place on earth. Like you can't, (laughs) you're not, there's no type of beef. There's no type of animosity. You know, you, People, strangers can't roll up in there. If you grew up in a gated community, you can't rap none of that shit. Right. Is your son still rapping that shit? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But he a little different than Mike Irvin's son because my son's seen all this. He's seen it. Yeah. He didn't live it, but he's seen it. I mean, everybody he was raised around was like, it's a difference from Mike Irvin's son and Boosie's son. Yeah, fair enough. Um, And plus, when I went to prison, he was he was back in the trenches. Your son? Yeah. Oh, because you lost your house. Yeah. He went. He had to go stay back with his mom. But uh, I hate my son rapping about all that, you know, because the women love him. He's supposed to be rapping for the women. I always tell him that the women, they want money. When it comes to music... It takes you a long time to find your voice, I feel, as an artist. It, it takes a while. Whenever you hear someone's early work, like, you know, the way Pac was rapping when he died was not how he sounded with Digital Underground. Or, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, it, you know, he was wearing a daishiki and, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like a little hat and, you know, he was, you know, it takes you a while as an artist to figure out your groove and what you're really about. So, yeah. you know, your son doing this shit now because he's seeing you do it. So, but after a while, he going to see what works and what doesn't. And I think that, you know, like. I mean, the music is good. I just don't like yeah. the message. I, I mean, I, I'll say it like this. Like, I remember 
we we have this this interview that uh, I I didn't do myself, but someone sent it to me that we put up with Nipsey Hussle, and he said that uh, when you look at all the great songs that come out of any genre, there's always one thing in common with all these songs, and that is honesty. There's there's an air of truth of who that person is in all of those songs, which is what resonates with the audience. It's a benefit of not knowing. You just you just raw. Whatever you are, you bring it to your art. And then you start learning shit and you gotta figure out how to keep the rawness in it. From learning all these ways to be more effective, you gotta learn how to not let the raw material get filtered out. And then from all these rules, you realize that it's only one rule. That's why they say you learn the rules to so you know how to break them. Cause you know, you realize what's really important. And it's a golden rule. And if you don't break the golden rule, all the other shit people will forgive and accept as long as you don't break the golden rule in the art, in my opinion, you know what I'm saying? Which is like, tell the truth. You know what I mean? Draw from your experience, tell the truth. Yeah. You rarely hear a song of some shit that's totally made up that has nothing to do with the person or whatever else. Right. You know, I mean, those songs could do okay, but the the the, the really timeless songs is like, yo, that's someone really opening up their heart and letting them know, letting people know what, what's really going through. You know, so with your son, yeah, but it might it might take a while. Not today, though. These days, it, this shit don't even got to be what you're going through. That shit don't matter these days. You can make a song about, I don't, I, don't, I believe that then, but now, uh, I don't know. It's kind of different. When you look at the greats, when you look at the Kendricks, the J. Coles, they're really rapping about themselves. They're really, they're really opening, yo, you know, Kendrick, J. Cole, Drake, like the dudes in that caliber are, they're, they're all really pouring their, their life out right. in those songs. Right. It's not just, they don't have ghostwriters. And if they right. do, it's only a song here but and there. But it's they type of people who buy the music these days. Mm. Back in the days, it was, it was us type of people. We had the great songs. Tupac, yeah. Biggie, Run DMC. Chuck D. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a new people of people who buy the music. Well, now, now it's pop. It's back, a, back then it wasn't pop. Right. In, in the, it was like the, the, the 1999, I remember because me and, me and Aries got into an argument. DMX. 1999 was the first year that hip hop became the dominant form of music in America. Before then it was all relatively underground. You had to be a hip hop fan. Now you just are, are a music fan and hip hop is just thrown at you because it's, dominating the charts. But yeah, it's uh, you and I grew up in a different era. You and I grew up in an era where you had to go find hip hop music. I, I, I'm i older than you. I remember there was no hip hop stations. Yeah, I had to go down to Warehouse Records and buy a, a hip hop album and not know what it was sounding like just because it was the only hip hop song I can get. Yeah, but it's a, it's a, it's a different people journey of people who buying the music now. Yeah. Vlad, that's how I feel like, you know, that's why those people are so successful. You know, people, most people, you know, all that gangster shit, that, that shit done played out. And you're, getting, and you're getting a bigger boost because they're not physically buying your album. Mm. Yeah, they're streaming. You, you're streaming. Yeah. So you get compared to everybody. Yeah. Yeah, I feel you. I feel you. The real fans went to them stores and waited in them lines. Oh, yeah. On, was it Tuesdays? Tuesdays and yeah. Thursdays. Yep. I remember. We that. went to the store and waited in those lines. Yeah. Now you get the magnitude of streaming. Right, which helps and it hurts at the same time. It's, it's a double-edged sword. I kind of like it, though. I feel it's, it's better to have access to everything as opposed to, you know, buying an album, there's only one song on there you like, and you feel like, damn, I just spent $18 on <laughs> one song. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I, I like it better. But when you bought the album, you learn more about that person. Of course. You, you go through the liner notes. When you, you buy that song, you're not really a fan. Yeah. You're a fan of that song. Or well, if you stream the song, you mean? Yeah, if you yeah. stream the song, you're you not just, really a fan. It's just there. It's just it comes there. up in your suggestions. It's just there. It's just there, and it comes and goes very quickly. Back then, you used to read every word on the yeah every who, who word. Produced it. Oh, what who, the shout outs are, bro. It, 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 was, it was a different level of fan base. Think about this, right? This to me is the big difference, then and now. Think about all the great hip-hop logos, symbols that, that have been out. Wu-Tang Clan. So, so, so deaf. So, so deaf. Souls of Mischief. 
Yeah. A uh, public enemy. No limit. No limit. The tank. Cash money. Cash money. Name a new artist that has a logo that people gravitate towards. Because they don't buy the CD. Exactly. It's just streamed. There's nothing to hold. There's no artwork. The artwork itself doesn't even matter. Kanye's last album cover was like a like a fucking snapshot of some mountains and shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like people don't even care anymore. But back then the artwork was important. And if you even go further back to, to vinyl when you had that big old 12 inch, when you, it was it was like a piece of art. People would hire artists and great painters to, to create their artwork. Now it's just like just a stream. And that's it. That's just what it is. So 1090 Jake, when I was at your house last time, our last interview, I mentioned him and you you mess with him. You like him. Yeah. I first respect what he be doing. Yeah. About dudes who yeah. yeah. And I was like at that point on the interview, I'm like, you know something? That seals it. I'm gonna do 1090 Jake interview. He saw it, we reached out, we booked it, we actually did it did so well, we did a second interview. He's now a regular guest on the show. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And, uh, I mean, he has an interesting kind of way of doing things. I mean, not only does he expose some people, but he also clears up a lot of rumors. So, for example, there was a rumor that, that Rollo was snitching or whatever else, and he said all that was fake. Rollo didn't cooperate at all. What he tried to do was he tried to pay someone to, like, take a fake drug charge to try to, like, lessen his own sentence, but nothing. It was all kind of bullshit. Um, so he came up with a story that never existed. And was like, look, I can tell y'all about this. I can tell y'all this, that, and the third. They got this, they got that, whatever, whatever. And the feds were like, we don't care about that. We want to know about these shootings. Hmm. We want to know about what's going on with this shit. He wasn't willing to talk about that. So none of it ever happened. The person that he had that was going to take the money to go down for some shit, he's like, yo, yeah, I know this person selling this, that, and the third. None of The person ain't even selling it, but that person would be like, yeah, I was doing that. Okay. Just to take it, and he was going to try to come up with some fugazi shit to give the Fed something to get a reduction. It never went through. But at the same time, his paperwork clearly states his case took so long, all of his co-defendants were already sentenced before it came time for him to actually be able to cooperate. So nothing he could have gave would have affected anyone because all of them were already sentenced. Mm, okay. So he never snitched on anyone in his case. And then ultimately that was found out and the whole thing got dropped or whatever else. But he didn't actually tell anyone on anyone. And he's getting out. By the time this comes out, he should probably be out already. Um, I still don't think everything 1090 Jake say is low just because he said that. I mean, you're right. It isn't. Yeah. I mean, but he does look up paperwork. He is good at that. He had been in the prison because he had been in the prison system for a long time since he was a juvenile. Uh, but he he exposed a bunch of people. Uh, Real Boston Richie, uh, Spot him, Got him. In fact, Sean Cotton, who uh, signed Spot him, Got him, said that after 1090 Jake exposed the uh, the cooperation thing, little Dirk gave Spot him, Got him $100,000 back because he had paid Dirk 100000 to do a feature. And when Dirk found out, he gave him the money back. Yeah. Um, do you feel that these days, though, exposing people for cooperating really does anything? Um, I mean, bro, like, I just be speaking on certain shit. Like, I don't, I don't be really trying to expose motherfuckers, bro. Like, I ain't gonna lie, bro. Like, especially if I used to fuck with you or something, like, I just would just parting ways from you. Like, and then, and that's the real deal, bro. Even with that situation with, with Lowe, bro, like. With who? With Rallo. That Rallo. was, bro, like. I ain't want to go back and forth with that dude, bro. Like, I, 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 no, but I'm saying, but Rallo, Rallo is, is straight, is what I'm saying. Rallo didn't cooperate on anyone. He tried to create a situation to get out of some shit, but it was really just like a, a shot in the dark. Rallo didn't cooperate on anybody. And Rallo did his time, and he's getting out, and I think he's going to be embraced. You know? I don't, man. I, bro, I, I be trying to say real talk. Fair enough. I ain't gonna say, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Buku niggas, bro. I had niggas paperwork 
Uh. They were trying to make me the 1090 Jake before 1090 Jake. Uh. Yeah. I had niggas I, I paperwork, bro. I'm, 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 I'm no cap, bro. People I just, refuse to put it out about people. Oh, yeah. People send me a lot of paperwork. But, you know, a lot of times you can't really tell. It's like, okay, is this Photoshop? Is it not? You got nah, you to research it yourself. Like a, I was getting paperwork from dudes co-defendants. Yeah. Right. Like, you know, not no... I had paperwork from dudes co-defendants, but I, ref, I refused to put it out to keep dude's name, you know. I ain't want to be, I ain't want to be the one... Uh, To be the negativity behind nobody's career, I don't like that. Yeah, I want my flowers for me. Yeah, I feel you. I, I've never, like, I've never done that. I've never exposed paperwork, even though I get a lot in my DMs. Man, I, I just know, feel I like know so much shit, bro. Like, yeah, I know, right? The bro. shit that we know behind the scenes is crazy. The shit that we don't put out is crazier than all <laughs> the shit that we put out. If I was to go on a crazy ass street. <laughs> If I was to go Gucci Mane on these motherfuckers, 2012, <laughs> man, 2012 bro, Gucci Mane, bro, like, yeah, I feel you, like, bro, this, these rappers ain't like that. Well, speaking of and that, they done that, and ain't you know, I mean, yeah. Well, this hits close to home with you, YNW Melly, who you went to his trial. His first trial, which ended up with a hung jury, they're about to start the retrial. Yeah. And they hit him with a bunch of new charges. Yeah. Some of which are witness tampering. Yeah. I, I, I'm surprised they're going this hard. I mean, they already lost one trial. I mean, they didn't lose it, but it ended in a, in a, in a hung jury. Now they're putting even more charges on him. And then... Um, YNW Bortland was caught up in the witness tampering shit, so now he's locked up. Yeah. He was on, you know. When they want you, they want you. I knew that I knew they wanted them bad when they waited for that law to get passed. They waited oh, so all the way. The death penalty. So it'd be eight four. Oh right. Yeah. You know, they waited all the way to that law got passed to take him to trial. Yeah, he was in jail for what, two years, three years? Yeah. They could have been took you to trial. You're right. They waited till that law got passed and took him to trial a couple months later. So they can kill him. So they can kill you. Mm. You know, when they want you, they want you, man. Uh, I just don't see how he didn't get a bun after a fucking mistrial. Yeah. That made me like, God damn. Yeah. Like, after a mistrial, that doesn't, that, that doesn't happen really, bro. So. See, the, the thing is, the more... The longer I do my job and the more I have to dig into the law and have these types of interviews and talk to lawyers and everything else like that, you, you start to see how of a disadvantage an average citizen has against the law. It's like you're really just, they say innocent until proven guilty, but it really doesn't work that way. Yeah. You know, like a grand jury. Like, I just recently found out how a grand jury works. You know, I mean, I don't have a criminal record, so I never really had a reason. But then I remember um, a lawyer broke it down to me. And if I wanted to get a grand jury indictment and I was the police, I could, it's not like a court case where you come in, you present your evidence, and then defense will try to argue your evidence, and then the grand jury decides. No, the police will come in present their evidence, and then come back a week later and present more evidence, and then drag it out for weeks or months, and there's no defense. No one's on your side arguing what they're bringing to you. So the jury's only hearing one side. I, I remember a lawyer told me that Johnny Cochran had a famous line that, say, that said that, that he could convict a ham sandwich with a grand jury. You know what I'm saying? They could it's a one-way course. Yeah. You have no say so. No. And they then they, and then they get the indictment. And then now you got a whole different set of nightmares ahead of yeah. you. You don't watch Law and Order? Not really, no. You don't watch all those crime nah. shows when they call and just say, uh, I know I can get this, uh, call the judge and tell him to uh, grant this. Yeah. Man, it's shit that easy, bro. It's that easy. It's that easy. It's that like, easy. Like, you know, like, I hate this court shit. Man, listen. Man, I hate it. The police. I've been sued. Two times this week. Mm. Yeah, I've been sued. 
I, I got. I mean, yeah, bro, I've had lots of lawsuits. <laughs> it's just part of the part of the they game. Just, they suing me now, bro. They just gave me a wrongful death lawsuit. For what? Me and this guy named Baby Soldier had a video in 2019 called Dirty. Okay. Before I get to the video, somebody must have got killed. I was featured on the video. Got called a couple of days before I come through the video. When I got there, it had already happened down the street or whatever. Why the hell are you suing me? Because <laughs> you're boosy. You got some money. That's why. I didn't provide security. I wasn't part of the video. That's I was right. just coming to the video to do my part and leave. Yeah. You suing me. I got to go to court in Florida. Man, this shit is crazy, bro. Like, yep. when you a celebrity, man, they got another dude suing me for the State Farm thing. He was just a, they say he was just a bystander there. Like, I'm just, bro, I'm, I've been, bro. Right, and here's the problem with lawsuits, right? Man. When it comes to people with money, is that when you get sued, you got to come out your pocket for a lawyer. You got to put down a, a retainer, 10, 20, 30,000. 20,000. Minimum, right? But when someone's suing you, they can get a lawyer on contingency, meaning that they'll just take a piece of your winnings and they'll do it for free. So someone could sue you with a zero bank account because they don't have to pay nothing the whole time until they collect the money at the end and then they split it up with the lawyer. It'd be crazy, bro. That surprised me. Up. I was like, are you serious? 25000 I need twenty. You know you got to go in there with the best lawyers. I mean... And then a lot of times you have to settle because it's cheaper than fighting it. Bro, like, You know, bro. people think people settle because they're guilty. No, most times it's because you know you didn't do it, but it's going to cost $100,000 to take cases, it to trial. Like, this is one of them cases that... It's just stupid. This out, this out of bounds. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but, you know, like, a good lawyer can get it dropped, though. Yeah, yeah, but it's but still... But you still got to pay. You got to pay, gotta pay, man. Like, y'all did better just coming asking me... Hey, my son died. Ooh, can we get like yeah, man, five thousand or something? Ten thousand, man. I'm hurting. Yeah, I got a heart. Here you go. Yeah, I feel you. Instead of bringing something that I had no, no knowledge, like it was, it was crazy, man. I it been a hard week for me. Well, since our last interview, twenty four members of BMF were arrested for drug dealing and scamming. I thought it was P P P P P P P loan. Might be. Maybe yeah, part a lot of it, of it was PVP loan. But it, it was, there was also some drug shit uh, involved in it. One of the people was J-Bo. Yeah, I was I, pissed. Who I interviewed. That's my boy. And they're saying that some of it comes from interviews. So people are like, oh, Vlad's the reason why J-Bo's in prison. And I'm thinking like, okay, I, I, I remember this interview. The whole interview was about the shit that he went to jail for before. Yeah. <laughs> the entire interview. I did not ask him what he's doing now. <laughs> I did not ask what he's involved in. We were talking about 15-year-old events yeah. that, he went, that he was convicted for, that he went to prison for and did his time. But of course, if there's a Vlad TV interview and the person goes to jail, it's, it's, it's my fault, of course. But honestly, I, I was disappointed, man. Like, I don't know whether J-Bo did it, but it, it kind of like, like I, I like the dude. You know what I mean? When you, when you get a serious conversation with somebody, you do a yeah. serious interview, not like we, we kept in touch afterwards, but like... Damn, like he seemed like a good dude. He seemed like he went through a lot. Seemed like he held his head. He yeah. he has morals and yeah. everything else like that. And I really hope that whatever they throwing at him is just some bullshit. Yeah. But it, it it would suck, man, to have to do what he went through, do all those years to come out and get into the same bullshit again, man. I, I really hope it's not true. Yeah, me too, bro. Like you know, I'm always rooting for Jay, bro. bro. I, I felt like that was becoming my partner, you know. Oh, you were fucking with him. Yeah, every time I go to St. Louis, J. Bo, he pulling up. Yeah, you know when he first got out, he he got a uh, he got a uh, I was I was I was rocking with his little nephew. Tough. We did a record. We did a video. His nephew died in the car wreck. Man, yeah, high speed chase with the police. Uh, and bro, I, I was pissed when I saw it, bro. Yeah, my cousin brought it to me like, bro, J. Bo. I was pissed, man. I hate to see real niggas leave the streets, bro. Special ones who stay solid. Yeah, he stayed solid. And he he was exposing other snitches at yeah. BMF. You know what I mean? He had that song by Jeezy. I bought like J-Bo. You know, he had a whole song about him. Yeah, J-Bo, 
real, real solid dude. Yeah, man, it's uh, it's it's fucked up. It's fucked up. Tory Lanez, uh, he just got denied a bond to try to get him out. He's also filed a bunch of appeals, uh, mistrials, anything else like that, all of which have been denied. Now, our last interview, I believe, was he already sentenced to the 10 years? Our last interview? I think he was. But what we had broken recently was that early on in his, in his case, he was offered a four-year plea deal that he turned down. Yeah. And just yesterday, when I did an interview, and I'm not going to say who it is because people start connecting the dots, but I did an interview with someone and they had like their publicists around them. And I was talking to one of the publicists and she told me she, would actually, she was actually working with Tori early on, the whole crisis management shit. And she said that he was offered a three-year plea deal early on. And he turned that down. To turn down three years, ended up getting 10. Does that surprise you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I understand this too, Vlad, bro. Like, it was a bad move on his part, but people who would never went, been to prison... Three years? That's a long sounds time. Sounds like a lot. That, that, that sounds like a lot, but it's, it's not. It sounds like a lot, but somebody who's never been to prison, my nephew did the same thing, bro. They offered him 28 on the body. And they offered him 15 on the body. Mm. He denied it and took him to the trial, and they gave him 28, 30. Double. He would have been home probably this year. And... Uh, Time you gotta understand when they got you, bro. I mean, like, if I was Tory Lanez, I would have, I would have raised my hand, apologized, yeah, been on the way home. You know, Tory, man, Tory. I won't hear his music when it come out. I gotta give me a feature. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, yeah. Hey, bro, it's just, I, I don't think he had enough. Mm. No, I would say what I'm saying. I'm going to stick with what I'm saying. A person who's never been to prison, we can't expect them to say three years is nothing. It's nothing. Yeah. Person who wake, woke up every day, person who has a child who he's raising. Yeah. You look at them kids like, man, I don't want to leave these kids, man. Right. So you throw a Hail Mary. You know, I, I think I might, you know, and most of the time the lawyers, they they, they not going to tell you. No, I, I, you know? I heard his lawyers was trying to tell him, but he wouldn't listen because his actual lawyer, it was it was a black woman who was like a superstar here in L.A. Yeah. She wouldn't take the trial. He had to go in a whole new lawyer oh, okay, because okay. she was like, I'm not doing this. Yeah, I'm not doing the whole Kelsey Shotter defense. I'm not. You're going to have yeah. to get someone else yeah. to go embarrass themselves in this courtroom because yeah. I'm not going to come up with this ridiculous defense at this point. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's how you could tell that he's just not listening to his lawyer. If his actual lawyer quit and he had to scramble and get someone else last oh, minute, I didn't know that. that means you're not listening to your lawyer. Yeah. Because let me tell you something. I talked to a lawyer in LA who knows the judge personally. Yeah. Who told me that this judge is the most reasonable judge in the whole LA system. They brought all types of guilty motherfuckers to this judge and they give them probation and slap on the wrist yeah. and everything else. That he said. If I was Tory's lawyer, I could have easily gotten him a year and five years probation. Because yeah. back then, Megan was not cooperating in the very beginning. It wasn't until he dropped that mixtape on her, you know what I'm saying, and yeah. dissed her on the mixtape and said that she wasn't really shot and started to mock her. That's when things started to get really bad. But in the very beginning, Megan was trying to protect him. Yeah. She didn't say that Tory shot me and whatever else. Man, well, if he would was lenient, but. It was yeah. a lenient judge. He could have got 23. Yes. Gave you 10 on 23. Yeah. Most your, time a, yeah. a rapper, you would have... Bro, he, then his arrogance? Yeah. Like, a, bro, that was a nice judge to give you 10. Right. And here's the thing. People don't think about Other this Other people would have maxed your ass listen, out. Listen, listen. People, for some reason, forget this very important part of this case. 
Tory Lanez is a foreigner. He's Canadian. He, a foreigner, came to America and shot an American citizen and thinks that they're going to get leniency? Go to another country and shoot one of their people and see what the fuck happens. Go to France and shoot a French guy. You know what I'm saying? See how, how nice the court system is to you. Go to Louisiana. Go to Louisiana. Go to Louisiana. Same case. I got 10 years for third offense marijuana. Like I tell people. <laughs> the same thing that Tory got for shooting somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Marijuana, which is, is it legal in Louisiana yet? No. But marijuana. It's marijuana. Seven grams, 13 grams, and probably 28 grams. Three different times. That's nothing. Are you hearing that, me, that, that's, that's personal use. Vlad, and I was never off of rehab, Vlad. Yeah. I've never been to rehab at all, Vlad. And I had a problem for years smoking marijuana. I just stopped in June when I got arrested because the judges either go to jail or smoke weed. <laughs> and I, I hate how weed smell now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I feel you. So when I said that, a lot of people took that offense like Boosie says anything. No, I'm telling you what would have happened to him in Louisiana. If you would have shot our pride and joy, Megan Thee Stallion, in her foot to where them knees can't work. You know she got them knees. <laughs> Man, they would have maxed you out, bro. 25. We got Jim Crow laws, bro. Yeah. He got lucky. You know, like, man, bro, they, he, he got blessed, man. He going to come home a stronger person. He going to know who his people is. Mm -hmm. Prison made me out of sharp or everything, man. It's school, man. It's school. You just yeah. got to survive it. I mean, listen, he learned the lesson that you can't listen to social media. You can't listen to people in your ear. You got to listen to your fucking lawyers, man. That's what I always say. You know, when I am dealing with someone, you know what I mean? Like, you know, like, like Tax Stone. Tax Stone wanted to do an interview before his trial. And I'm like, let me talk to your lawyer. The lawyer said, this is the worst idea in the world. I had to tell him I'm not going to do it. That's my friend. But I said, I'm not, your lawyer told me not to do it. Yeah. If you want to go do a do with someone else, I'm not going to be the face of you getting fucked up in this, in this courtroom. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. There's lots of other outlets out there. But your lawyer's telling me, so I'm, I'm listening to your lawyer. I'm not listening to you right now. You're paying this guy. He knows better than both of us. I don't think Tori listened to, you know, everything I heard was that Tori was just a difficult client. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? He was listening to his lawyers. He's dropping fucking mixtapes about the victim, fighting with August Alsina. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like just, just doing everything you're not supposed to do. Leaving comments on Instagram. Like, you know, DMing people like me and talking shit to me. Like, you know, so you're now creating, you know, animosity with the media. Like, like you know what I'm saying? Like, like this, it doesn't make any sense. You're, you're the only one on trial here. Everyone else can give a shit. Right. But, you know, I've been saying it. Two years before the trial, I said, he's going to jail. It's all laid out there. And he was mad at me. He DM'd me all angry. And I'm like, okay, you can be mad at me. Don't matter. And, you know, he got his 10. But he could have he gotten three now, I found out. Three out in a year and a half. With some little extra time and shit like that. A year and a half. Easy. And you get deported. But you're going to get deported no matter what. You yeah. shot. You're a, you're a foreigner that shot an American. Yeah, they probably going to have that jet waiting on them. Dude. Exactly. Yeah, he probably oh, yeah, no, no. He's not going to step foot in America ever again. In life. That's wow. how it works. In life. I don't care if you got Rolling Loud. I don't care if you perform at the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> you, you better <laughs> go if to Toronto. If I can tell him anything, I'll just tell him, you know, take this as a... Learning lesson. A learning lesson, bro. Like, you know, like... Because it's different these days. He's still got to follow him. He does. You got people speaking up for Tory. Like, people mad at them 10 years, bro. You have a lot of people. People argue with me on Twitter. Man, I was on a plane one day, and a, um, a lady came to me and said, uh, aren't you an uh, entertainer? And I said, yes, because she saw people taking pictures. And I said, yes, ma'am. I just want to let you know that Tory Lanez was done wrong. <laughs> he was wrong. Oh, yeah. Ten years of your life. I'm like, oh, my 
gosh, this shit is serious. No, no, listen, when I put up- I was like, man, woman, I didn't do anything. <laughs> like, you know? Yeah, when I put up the tweet and said, listen, I just found out, I had announced that it was four years. I found out that actually he had a three-year plea deal that he turned down. You know what people start replying? That just proves he's innocent. He'd be crazy to face 25. and But, you know, if he if he's innocent, he's obviously innocent. That's why he turned down the three. Well, no, you're right. He turned down the three because he was he'd never been in prison before. He was scared. He's five foot three. You know what I'm saying? Never been in prison. He's in a fucking you now I remember 1090 Jake said something interesting. He said, he's gonna have, unless he's completely in PC the whole time, he's gonna have some problems. Cause California State Prison is very serious on the gang shit. Oh, yeah. And they don't care about the celebrity shit. Mm -hmm. So when it goes down, whatever skin color you are, you better bang with those dudes. You don't have the opportunity to be the celebrity in there. If you're a general population and it pops off, you're required to get involved. Mm -hmm. You have to pick up a knife. You have to. It's mandatory. So the situation he's in now he has to basically forget about being a celebrity. Yeah. They don't care. You're not a rapper, motherfucker. The blacks and the whites are going at it. The blacks and the Mexicans are going at it. The whites and the, you know what I'm saying? If you're on the side of whatever race is getting attacked, you'd better fucking fight or else they're going to fuck you up. Yeah. They don't give a shit who you are. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I, cause I guess I remember I was talking to someone cause I guess they, there's no like gang sections in California State Prison. It's like they, they separate the Crips and the Bloods and the Latin yeah. Kings. Like everyone's just there together. Okay. So when shit goes down. It go down. It go down. Yeah. You know? In the Fed, they, they, it's different. Yeah. Yeah, it's different in the Feds. Yeah, in the Fed. But, but state is worse. Oh, yeah. They're state. better off in the Feds. Yeah, yeah. I learned that from just being in the Feds a couple of weeks. Yeah. The Fed is sweeter than, than the yeah. state, bro. Because you get more of like the high end, the white collar criminals. Yeah. Or, you know yeah, what I'm saying? It's Dudes. sweeter, you know. Yeah. Uh, I ain't, you don't really see the savages. No. They're all the Because state. mostly everybody had money. You yeah. Know? Exactly. Yeah. Kodak Black, you guys were going at it last time. Yeah. Did y'all work it out? Communicate? Anything? Nah, I ain't, I ain't talked to Kodak. Uh, somebody summed me, summed me. He got mad what I said about. Uh, about Tory Lanez had it ten years, uh, and I, and I said it was, he got a sweet deal. They sent me something the other day. Kodak said, "This nigga always speaking out my mouth." I ain't you know what I, mean? <laughs> I ain't take it no way, man. I mean, yeah. well, according to Ten Ninety Jake in our last interview, he put out that Kodak Black was actually in PC the whole time. BG told me it was in PC. Does that really surprise you, though? Um, I mean, everything surprised me when it come to, was surprising me when it came to Kodak, because like I said, I looked at Kodak like, you know, like my little, like a little nigga under me, like a little nigga, who, you know, who stand up for that generation the way I stand up for my generation. So anything that, I had kind of high expectations, I had high expectations, Thug tations <laughs> for Kodak. So, you know, uh, I mean, I mean, Jizzle told me that, you know, I don't really want to get on no, no, no Kodak shit on this interview. I mean, Kodak look like he needs some help, bro. Like, you know. Oh, like, yeah, that, that Dream Champs interview, he looked like he's. Bent. I, I think he looked. He was high off something. For me, out on the outside looking in, it just feel like he going through something right now, bro. Especially since after that six nine shit, and I just you know I I rather them shake back. Or, you know I I don't I don't got nothing negative to say about him right now. You know I mean fair enough. I want to see him get some help, man. You know. Well, yeah, and six nine got locked up since our last interview. In, yeah, uh, I saw that. Dominican it, Republic. I saw that. They jumped some producer dude. It was I all caught it. on camera. I saw that. I saw that. I, I don't know if it's true or not, but some dude from DR was like hitting me with like like the local news and stuff like that. What he was saying is, is that regardless of what happens, no matter what he gets, lawyer wise or whatever, the way the laws are set up in DR, he's gonna do at least a year. 
Damn. Them prisons be different out there, too. Man. I had a what you call him friend from uh from Cross there one time. He used to always come to Baton Rouge. He was like, bro, like, say the man, everybody try to be guards over there to just to rape the women in prison. I was like, damn. Yeah. Third world prison. Third world prison. Let me tell you. Damn. The one time in my life that I got robbed was in Mexico by the police. I was in Cancun, coming back. My shirt off, drunk. Police rolled up on me in the Jeep. They threw me up against that car, took my wallet, took my money out of my wallet, and gave my wallet back. And I remember the only thing that was going through my head was do not resist arrest. <laughs> you do not want to get locked up in a Mexican jail. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Just, just no problem. Take whatever y'all want. I didn't complain. I didn't go to the precinct the next day. Yeah. To, File no. I said I took my I lost like maybe three, four hundred dollars and I said I got off easy. I was hearing stories in the tank when I was in San Diego about them getting robbed by the police in Tijuana. Like exactly. Dude, like he went on date, bro, he like straight jumped out on him and Yeah. No, you know, they, they jumped out on me. Like, like, bro, like I was minding my own business. Yeah. You you don't want to fuck around. You, you think America's bad? Shit. Go over there. See what the fuck happens. They'll fuck you up. That's where he live now, 6 9 Well, I think he's doing a lot of shit over there. Because, oh, you know, okay. I mean, he's found, you know, Americans really don't fuck with him anymore because yeah. of snitching shit. So he's really got his niche in the in the, the Spanish market now. Okay. You know, so he's just doing Spanish shit. But he's bringing his own set of drama over there. Um, yeah, I don't think um, 6 9 hasn't learned his lesson. It's, it's very clear. He's doing the same shit that he was doing that got him locked up, you know, by the feds. Yeah. I think probably he, know, he probably know he probably feel like he know enough to set himself free again. I mean, oh, to snitch on someone over there? Yeah, I don't over know. here. I mean, I don't know how it go, bro. But Shit, Dr. Don't care about what's happening. Over I mean, here. he <laughs> the way the the way I saw him, how he thugging out there in Dr. Like six nine out there, out his top. He out his top. Yep. Uh, I had uh, Doctor Stephen Greer. Uh, on my show recently, he's the uh, one of the experts about UFOs and aliens. Do you believe in aliens yourself? Bro, I said it six years ago. Go look at the Me and Chaotic video <laughs> from Houston, uh, the Houston uh, DJ. Okay. All you got to do is boost it, says he believes in aliens. Okay, you believe in aliens? Yes! <laughs> yes! Have you seen an alien? I've seen UFOs. Where? In California. Okay, we're in California right now. Bro, like, bro, bro, bro. I've seen shit in the sky, bro. Like, man, I'm, I'm no, I'm not, no, I'm not crazy, bro. I said in the interview five years ago, I just told K I did. I say, I believe in aliens, bro. Okay. I believe in them, bro. I done seen some shit in the air. And this when I was high, but. I know what I saw, man. I know I done seen some shit in that air, bro. Like, be like, what the fuck? Now the, the one of the biggest guys goes under oath and says this? Right, they had a congressional UFO meeting. Uh, he went under oath, man. This is, bro, bro. This is all I needed to talk shit. <laughs> this is all I needed. <laughs> this is all I needed. I used to watch this show. What's the name of this show? Uh, Unsolved Mysteries. Okay. I used to love this show, right? This is okay. when I first started believing in aliens. All right. Bro, this shit was so believable to me. After that, I went to the other, the ghost stories. What's the, what's the name of the uh, ghost show? I believe in ghosts too. When they go paranormal activity. Paranormal activity, okay. <laughs> you believe all that shit. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm telling you, bro. They got dudes, bro. They got dudes that will go watch uh, all the episodes of Unsolved Mystery. Every time they got at least three things about UFOs grabbing somebody and bringing them back. Okay. With three witnesses, and then the witnesses they don't be cloud chasing witnesses. This be a a a a a a, a, a old auntie who was sitting on the porch. 
This be a man with a lawnmower. You know what I'm saying? This ain't nobody chasing clout. Right. Uh, bro. It's not an Instagram model. This is not an Instagram. None of this, bro. <laughs> These be real witnesses who saw things, bro, like, and saw it clear. They don't, they don't be like, I think I saw Uru. No. He went up in the air and something sucked him up. I've been believing it. And I've been believing them. Well, they about got boosted phase now. <laughs> the aliens? <laughs> oh, they oh yeah, they 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 like that now. They like that. Oh yeah, they like that. Well, according to Dr. Stephen Greer, what he says is that the US has had alien spaceships since like the 1950s. And a lot of the alien the, the UFOs that you see are actually man-made alien spacecraft that they've that the US has made based on the ships that they've captured. And they're used for all types of stealth missions and stuff like that. And he basically goes to a long explanation about how, you know, if Boeing gets a billion dollar contract to make a plane, the plane only costs like 200 million. The other 800 million is kind of diverted into like these alien, you know, uh, projects that even the president doesn't know about. I think the audience needs to understand there's a legal black budget. In other words, very few people are read into it in Congress and a very few people at the presidential intelligence level would know. And those were legal. I'm talking about projects like he was referring to that is basically a misappropriation and often embezzlement of funds from the budget that go into unsanctioned and unapproved programs. So that's let's call that the illegal black budget. And the illegal black budget is the big one because that's how you're building these man-made UAPs. I don't know, man. I believe. <laughs> I believe, bro. I believe aliens got on Jordans right now. <laughs> 1950s and you, it's 2023. Aliens got on Jordans right now, man. Okay. Yeah, man, listen, that, that interview went huge. That's why I brought him back. When I saw it, man, I, I say I told you. What did it look like? What, what did the spaceship that you saw look like? Uh, like a UFO. <laughs> so it was like a, a circle thing. I yeah. saw one shoot through the air one day. I was on a balcony in Beverly Hills mm. at the same hotel Whitney Houston died. Mm. I didn't see I, I I I know I know that was one. It wasn't an aircraft, bro. It was a circle. Mm. And then I start. Is it a drone, maybe? Googling shit. I just started Googling all the sightings. Do you know how many sightings they have had? Thousands. It's a thousand liars. Just think about it. A thousand, over thousands of sightings of UFOs and everybody lying. Mm. The questions are complicated, but the answers are simple. <laughs> hey, man, listen, I hope to actually see one. I hope to see one. I hope to see an actual alien in my lifetime. Man, you got to come on, bro. You just think about it, bro. If somebody say he killed uh, 1,300 people, you killed 100. Killed a few. You killed a few. <laughs> if somebody say they saw a million UFOs, it's 24 of them out there. Okay. I hope so, man. All right. All right. I hope so. I hope so. I want to see. I haven't seen an alien yet. I haven't seen a UFO yet. I hope... At some point, I will see one. I hope I'm as lucky as you are and see a and see an alien Beverly Hills. I'm t I was on the balcony at the Beverly Hills up there. I'm I got you, you, man. I got you. I that motherfucker you. went across the sky. <laughs> I look, look. I did like this. I never forget. I did like this, bro. It was gone, but I knew what I had saw. I knew what I had saw. And guess where all the sightings be at? California. California and Las Vegas. Yep. That's where all the sightings be. If you look up 70% of the sightings, they're in California or Las Vegas. Yeah. A area 51. Bro, it's down. They down there under their ground playing basketball, right? <laughs> <laughs> Long ass arms, dunking. <laughs> I been believe. I ain't lying. <laughs> Chaotic, I told you. Uh, well, a couple things before I let you go. Um... Young Jeezy and uh, Jeannie Mae are getting a divorce. Yeah. I'm, I'm surprised. 
I really thought that, like, damn, like, Jeezy Wynn got married to this TV celebrity. They had a baby. Like, yo, like, this is kind of dope. Didn't last that long, though. Young Jack said he wasn't surprised. Were you surprised? I was kind of surprised until they divorced and I saw that interview. Which one? The, the, the dark meat interview? Yeah, with the dark <laughs> weed might meat. I remember that. I was, I was, that, that was when I was like, hold on. My nigga ain't see this? <laughs> that when I was like, man, cause I ain't, I was like, I was like surprised cause I just saw Jesus doing a lot of big positive things, big, you know, like, he was looking different. He was bossed up. He was, you know, he'd yeah. been a boss, but he was just. I was wearing suits and, you, you know, know. He was just, he was just, he was looking like a married man. Or he had a book. You know, like he was, you know, like, but I mean, he was still booked every weekend with, with me. We were going crazy doing shows. Oh yeah, he was still doing shows. Oh yeah, man, Jesus getting a sack every road. Yeah. When you got the streets, you ain't going nowhere bro, for yeah. a long time. I'm telling you, if you, bro, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus still that nigga, bro. I'm telling you, like, Jesus got a catalog, bro. Like, I'm telling you, bro, like, me and Jesus, like, we one of the two people who, at our age, still packing out shit and, and getting money. But uh, I was kind of surprised, even though I never saw her with him at, not, at a show. Mm. Oh, she never went with him? I never saw her with him. Well, they had a baby, so she's probably home with the baby. Yeah, but. Uh, I was kind of surprised though, cause I was, I was happy for him. Yeah, I was, I was really. Then my, my my aunties was throwing it in my face. <laughs> oh, you need to see. You saw cheesy. what G, your boy did. You get married. What about you? You better find you something. I was like, God damn. Now you can be like, look, 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 <laughs> look. Boy, they was on my head. I cause they like Jesus. I just love G, especially my young aunties that have pussy. They talk about. Did you see what Jesus and Jesus? That boy is a, that. I was like, damn man, Jesus, Jesus, and bossed up and hung up his hat. You know, but yeah, for a year. <laughs> now he's back. <laughs> I mean, what, what's kind of interesting about that situation was that she was married to this white dude, but she said she never wanted to have kids with him because she didn't respect him. Only to, to get with Jeezy and have a kid with him right away. And then get a divorce right afterwards. Yeah, see, I don't know their history. I don't know yeah, the no, interview. That's the, that's the history. I only know one interview. You know what I'm saying? And then, mm. and then in the interview, she's like, oh, I like white meat with dark meat on the side. So I don't know, man. I'm not saying it's her fault. I'm not saying it's his fault. Relationships are diff difficult, man. Relationships are yeah, difficult. Yeah, we don't, nobody knows what happened. No one man. knows. They probably don't even fully understand it. Like, you know bro. what I mean? Kids are difficult. New being a first mom is difficult. You know, being married with a kid is difficult. You know, cultures are different. You know what I mean? He probably, you know, had to get adjusted to her Asian family. She had to get adjusted to his, his black family. And you know what I'm saying? That, that takes a while. And ultimately, man, the point, reason, of, it all, it the point of it all, that beautiful child. They have a beautiful kid. And you know. Bro, I made a song about that on my blues album. Like, you yeah. know, uh, I don't regret nothing, man. You know, I don't regret I don't regret it because, you know, I, I, you might, all, all this, we got a beautiful child. I say that about all my, all, all, all my kids, like, you know, we got a beautiful child. We got to focus on that. Once we done, yeah. our only mission is to get that child that love and, and support like we still together. You know, even though I'm not with my last child mother and having been with her for uh, probably five years. I've never introduced my, ch my child to another woman, even my last girl. I've never introduced my child to another woman unless I marry her. Yeah, I've always felt it was weird when I, when I date women with kids and they try to push their kid on me like on a second or third date, I'd, I'd always look at them sideways. Like, what are, what are you doing right now? We don't even. I be thinking, you know, you'll do that to my kid with you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I, I never. You know, that's it. a big step yeah. for I, I you to bring that. another woman into until into your a uh, uh, man into your child life. 
you know, uh, once you get a child, you gotta, you gotta put on that front, man. You gotta, you gotta put on that front and hope you got a woman that's, that's mature enough to understand that. A lot of women want to get get in the child life to make the other woman mad. You just you got to have a woman who mature enough to understand that, and that's probably the only woman you'll you'll give the chance to to be around that long. Because a lot of women not gonna understand that. Yeah, a woman with a with a with a childish mind won't understand that. Mm -hmm. If you tell them no, you not yeah, I don't want you to meet my child. Well, they'll think it's something. They're not thinking about the longevity of what you're trying to do for that child. Right. That's why I respect I respect a woman who respect my decision. Yeah. Because not only is you you not showing loving me, you loving you loving my life. You respecting my life and what'll make me happy, and you looking at my future and not just your future. And that's what that's what I love about a woman who I deal with. Yep. I agree. I agree. Last thing before I let you go, uh, just recently we lost uh, Richard Roundtree, who played Shaft. Who, the Shaft dead? Yeah, Shaft is dead. The original Shaft, not the remake. The original Shaft. Oh, I don't know. You got to show me him. I'm thinking you talking about Samuel L. Jackson. No. I was going to say, hell no. Not Sam, yeah. <laughs> Shaft. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. As someone who basically I feel has taken the torch from these original black exploitation films to what you're doing right now, I figured it hit, hit close to home for you a little bit. Because they're basically doing, they were doing back then, you know, lower budget movies and stuff like that. Shaft was a bigger movie, but in general, that whole genre was lower budget movies that catered to a black audience that really started to take off and saved a lot of Hollywood studios. Yeah. And, um, you know, I had uh, Fred the Hammer Williamson. You know what that is? Yeah. I yeah. just interviewed him. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. 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 I look up to that guy, man. He looks great at like 83. You know a what I'm saying? Angles. I just saw, what you call him, just died at 83. Who's that? Paulie. I mean, um. Oh, yeah, from. Uh, from Rocky. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The trainer. Yeah, yeah. The 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 dad of of his of Rocky's wife. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I just saw he died at 83. He died, man. Yeah. And uh, you know, like for example, with Fred Williamson, we talked about how you had these successful black movies in the in the 70s, and they try to downgrade them by calling them black exploitation films. The NAACP kind of pushed that term to try to downplay just regular movies that happen to star black people. Yeah. But but these films were like, Shaft was an epic film. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? A Superfly. Yeah. Epic film. You know, but, and, and a lot of those dudes, like, no one really liked that term. And it was it was used to degrade the people that were doing them. But, but these are epic films, man. And Shaft was one of the classics. And he just died at like 81 years old. But films like that is what inspired people like you to create these independent films and to do your own thing. You know what I'm saying? And uh, you got a new film coming out. Yep, new film coming out. No honor, honor loyalty, or love. Uh, executive produced by me, written by... Million Dollar Key, dropping on my birthday. Uh, I just wrote another one called Twins. I'm playing two characters on there, both of the twins, the gangster twin and the nerdy twin. Uh, we start shooting now in January. Me and Jit the Beast finna drop an album first week of uh, December. Uh, me and BG working on our album. Once he get off house arrest, we'll, we'll really go in. Well, how, not house arrest. Halfway House. Mm -hmm. uh, me and Hurricane working on the album, Hurricane Chris. Oh, okay. Yeah, we didn't start you working just on the murder that. case, by the way. Yeah. You did the interview with me talking about it. Yeah, we just, uh, and I'm just, I'm just working, man. And staying focused on, on the prize and that's keeping, keeping what I got going and steady being successful, man. And 
and going through all my life, my life troubles. <laughs> yep. Yeah. There's a lot of them right now. Yeah. And yeah. since you have an open case, I purposely did not talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I, I respect what you're going through, but it's... Yeah. Go to court December 15th. Y'all say a prayer for me. Yes. Yeah. That's what it is. Boosie. Another one in the can. Peace. Right.